I wear a few different hats as a CFO. You know, sometimes it's referred to as chief fixing officer. <laughs> Wherever there's a fire in the business, um, you know, I'm often there first. Whatever hat CFOs like Imran need to wear, Sage's tools and insights can make sure they fit. Sage, helping business flow. The Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast. With Lucas Volvo. Looking to sell your Volvo? Contact them today for a no obligation quotation. It's game day. And this is the home of Scottish football. It's Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Good afternoon and welcome to Clyde One Super Scoreboard on a big Saturday all across the SPFL. Rangers are looking to reopen a five-point lead against Motherwell before Celtic head to Hearts tomorrow. Neil Warnock's Aberdeen really could be doing with a win, but St Mirren will have other ideas in Paisley. And Dundee, Kilmarnock, Hibs, Ross County and St Johnston Levy make up the Saturday card for Gordon DL, Mark Wilson and Hugh Evans. So Clement wants the Rangers fans to remain in their seats until the end of the game against Motherwell as a mark of respect to the Rangers players, but... It's Motherwell staying power that's the important question to be answered at Ibrox this afternoon. Rangers are rampant. Motherwell in for a long afternoon. Meanwhile, the most intriguing game, St Mirren Aberdeen, Neil Warnock. No wins in five league matches for the Dons, but he has been given a tactical masterclass by none other than Gordon Dale on the motorway because he ran in to the Aberdeen team bus. Not literally, but metaphorically. <laughs> and finally, Partick Thistle Dundee United in our area at Fair Hill. Race blew it last night against Bottom Club Arbroath. They're at Dundee United at Fair Hill today. The chance to go three points clear of the Rovers. Big stuff going on. Yeah, I think I think we're now in the territory. Every weekend's a pressure weekend, not just for the top two, obviously to try and get into the top six. Relegation battles tight as well, so every game is precious out there. Three points is uh, what every team's looking for. Some good fixtures, plenty of goals, plenty of action, and plenty of talking points. Yeah, without doubt. I mean, some good fixtures again, and and they're coming thick and fast now. But one thing's for sure: if you're going to win this week title, you have to take care of your home games. Rangers have to do that today. Will it be as emphatic as last week? That remains to be seen. All across the games, something to be played for, and even at the bottom, St. Johnson, who were looking like they were once going to get dragged into that relegation battle, have it in their grasp to put light between them and Livy. Ten games to go. The sun is shining, Hugh Keevans. I know our league is not perfect, far from it, but it does feel like at this stage of the season, every single fixture matters. There is a lot to look forward to this afternoon. Well, Rangers, the need for five points of a lead over Celtic is, of course, uppermost in the minds of the fans. Aberdeen, their fans are up in arms over Neil Warnock and the lack of success that he's had as interim manager. Hibs against Ross County. Well, Ross County could do themselves a real favour by getting further away from the relegation drop zone. And, of course, Dundee at home to Kilmarnock looking to overcome the sensation of losing 7-1 to Celtic in midweek. Meanwhile, Brendan Rodgers drums his fingers and waits to see if Callum McGregor is going to be fit for that game at Tynecastle tomorrow it'll be a very unusual Celtic side without the skipper so what's this big exclusive you're claiming that Neil Warnock waved to you from the Aberdeen team bus yeah. on the M8 this afternoon I obviously recognise me I've spoken to Neil a few times in my days gone by he must have seen me and went oh there's a the dazzler the, the, the thing that's in, confusing in me usually you wait until like at least 15 minutes into a Saturday show before you lie to us are you serious mm. on this? no nah, I'm lying no no I'm serious whereabouts did you see them? the Precisely. 74 they would get caught up in fact their bus will probably be late um, a very attractive bus and he gave you a wee wave it's got two it's got a photo of Shinny and I don't know who the other player is it's very attractive they've got, they, they've got blacked out windows yeah but I was right beside them and he obviously was sitting I seen him and I looked in and he jumped across. <laughs> that, that, that does I, sound embellished, quite I'd, frankly. I had a wee wave. He doesn't jump anyway. Well, he, he moved across, but uh, 
I tell you what, they were late. I've got to say they were held up. I was I was neck and neck when I couldn't help. I was staring in. No one of those ones that you just kept looking Aye. until somebody eventually Listen, went. I know you've, you've, oh yeah, you've stared, stared in, in a few windows, windows in your time. Oh one four one nine five one one zero two five. Write that down right now because later on you'll be able to have your say. But there's plenty of action to get through before that. Let's go to Ibrox Rangers against Motherwell. Andrew McLean has the teams. Yeah, we all mentioned that every game from now until the end of the season is going to have that running story of closing gaps and extending points when it comes to the top two. Rangers, of course, with a chance today to move five points clear of Celtic ahead of their tough trip to Tynecastle tomorrow. Two very different tests Rangers have had this week and overcome as well. I'm sure the fans here would want to see a similar performance to that 5-0 hammering of Hearts last Saturday. Then they scrapped it out for a vital three points, didn't they, on Wednesday at Rugby Park. Philip Clamontno saying that they'll have to be way of Motherwell especially because they are the third top goal scorers in the league despite their position in the Premiership Theo Bear and Jack Vale both in good goal scoring form they gave Rangers a good game here actually earlier on in the season Stuart Kettlewell will be hoping that they can come away with something this time though four changes for Philip Clement coming into this one Barisic, Lawrence, Cortez and Silva drop out in come Yilmaz, Raskin, Sterling and Desser so Jack Butland in goal for them today the back four James Tavernier, Connor Goldson, John Suter and Rid van Yilmaz John Lundstrom and Nicholas Raskin the two holding midfielders Ross McCausland, Mohamed Diaz Mandy and Dujon Sterling in behind Serial Desso. So substitutes McCrory, Silva, Jack, Lawrence, Wright, Roof, Davies, Balogun and Barisic. Two changes for Motherwell. Adam Devine drops out. He can't play against his parent club. Sam Nicholson is on the bench for this one. In comes Shane Blaney. Looks as if he'll play at left back in this game with Georgie Gent only fit enough for the bench Jack Vale comes in from the start as well Liam Kelly in goal for them the back five Stephen O'Donnell Paul McGinn Bevis McGabby Dan Casey and Shane Blaney the midfield three Davos Zratkovsky Lennon Miller and Blair Spittle Theo Bear and Jack Vale the front two the substitutes Oxborough Gent Abika, Halliday, Shaw, Nicholson, Elliott, Ferry and Wells. The referee for this one at Ibrox is Alan Muir and the VAR is Ewan Anderson. Halliday back on the bench, fit and raring to go. Andrew McLean sounds fresh enough after the big Clyde one night out last night as well. We'll see how the rest of the team fare as the afternoon goes on. Let's find out the reaction in the studio. Rangers team, Gordon DL. I don't feel like there's ever any big surprise or big conclusion to take away anymore because Philippe Clement can make changes and no one really uh, bats an eyelid and the guys that do stay in have, have generally done a good job recently anyway Yeah, he likes to he likes to rotate that um, squad every game uh, keeps everybody on their toes, Gordon um, even after a magnificent performance against Hearts last weekend 5-0 at Ibrox going on anything that you care to mention um, and then he makes three changes um, and midweek as well so he's not frightened to make changes he's not frightened to you know, throw the gauntlet down to one or two players and say, right, OK, you've got to keep playing uh, very well to keep in this side. And uh, that's a big task, a big ask for Motherwell today. I know a lot of Rangers fans before a Hearts game were saying, look, we've got to give somebody a real doing. They certainly gave it to Hearts. Motherwell defensively have not been great this season. So uh, I think Motherwell will need a big performance today at Ibrox to get out of there. Mark, if there's a Mr Versatility award to be handed out at the end of the season, it feels like Dujon Sterling's thrown his hat in the ring for that. Oh, without doubt. He comes into the side in a number of positions, never lets his manager down. I keep saying, having a player like that within your squad is so important um, because he turns out the same performance if that's fullback, if that's centre midfield. He's found himself recently kind of occupying that left midfield role um, and we did think it would be more narrow to start with when we saw him against St Mirren there but he, he did hug the touchline at times and he's just so athletic and that's why he gets away with it good on the ball as well and he's been asked to play a role today uh, again McCausland in the side as well you know we've seen flashes of him this season again this is a big afternoon for him but again what that says Philippe come on constantly rotating his side keeps everybody happy does right keeps everybody ready for action but He's getting the same results out of them. That's very difficult to do. So credit to his players who are sometimes sitting on the bench, probably unhappy that they're not playing, but come in the following week and perform to the maximum. And a huge week for you, Gordon Diel, the week that you finally admitted that maybe Borna Barisic is not Rangers' first choice left back, Philippe Clement, full of praise for Ruud van Yilmaz yesterday, and he's in the team today. Well, yeah, um, no surprises after uh, midweek he changed it uh, at half time, Gordon. He'd made those 
three changes prior to the Hearts game. Barris has come in. Obviously, Yilmaz has been in terrific form, I've got to say that. Maybe it's just the fact that Yilmaz looks like he's got a future there. Barris looks like it's the exit door at, um, in the summer. So, yeah, Yilmaz has been uh, really impressive since he came into the team. And I think uh, under Clement, he's really shining. I think uh, Philippe Clement, still on a high after that Clement result in midweek. He thought it was a massive win and of course he was correct because they were a goal down but for Jack Butland might have gone two down but they've come back in great style Tavernier done a terrific goal took him beyond John Gregg's record Tavernier is now in his own quiet way becoming a, a Rangers legend uh, and then Tom Lawrence finishing the deal with his goal so I think Rangers have momentum they have this belief that the league title is within their grasp and that's why I'm very much afraid that in spite of all the great efforts of Blair Spittle, of the Bear up front and of Lennon Miller, the outstanding player at the club, it just won't be enough. Rangers, with those fans behind them, I think are going to have a comfortable afternoon and win convincingly. A couple of absentees for... Motherwell, Gordon, great to see our own Andy Halliday back on the bench But Georgie Gent only fit for the substitutes bench as well Which means Shane Blaney at left back It's not a completely alien uh, position to him But not seen him play there too often um, So maybe Short Kettle will a bit limited in his defensive options today Yeah, and if you're young McCausland and you're, you're looking at that situation Thinking, right, I fancy my afternoon here Because you're right, Blaney's not played a lot of games at left back He's more of a centre back um, but they'll just need to sit there I don't think uh, Stuart Kettlewell will be telling these full backs to get up high and press high up at the pitch because they'll probably be there they'll get everybody behind the ball they'll try and make it difficult they'll try and sit in and then hit Rangers on the counter because they have got one or two, two good players because uh, who's right young um, Lennon Miller's been excellent terrific uh, Spittle you've seen the goals that he's starting to score he's had a great season um, and the bear and if you can get the, the supply to him he can cause problems if you can feed him feed the bear right, yeah. feed that, him. that would have been a better turn of phrase but anyway we'll leave Rangers Motherwell there for now as soon as we're done with this let's hear from the two managers Motherwell yeah it's a little bit a strange story I'm always interested in data because it's, it, um, it controls your feelings or it backups the feelings that you have or not you see where they are in the league. And I've seen now in the data that they are, and I was surprised about that but because it was something I didn't know. But it's the team who's, who's third in the ranking of scoring most goals in the league. So that was something new for me. So it shows also that we need to play not only a, a game where we need to be offensively really good to break open the wall, but we need to defend as a team also really well against them. It's going to be also crucial not to be naive. Everything that's happened since I've been at the football club in just over a year would suggest that, that we don't go into our shell and that there is no fear and that we've generally had a, a really good organisation when you know that you're getting into tough games. Um, that's not to say that they just don't have a lot of the ball. That's not to say that they don't get a lot of crosses into our box and, and, and that they don't have opportunities because we've had to ride out those moments as well. Um, but I don't sit in front of you alluding to you know, a, a horrendous showing or you know that lack of confidence or, or, or belief going to the big venues and playing against the top sides in the country I don't sit here with that feeling because I, I don't really have too much evidence to suggest that we've been really competitive in these types of games I am assuming the Aberdeen bus has arrived in Paisley for St Mirren Aberdeen David Freel is there yeah Gordon it's arrived Neil Warnock gave me a wee wave there as well so I've joined Gordon DL in getting that pleasure today but it's going to be a big day if he'd said five weeks ago that Gianni Infantino would be in Paisley to watch an Aberdeen side managed by Neil Warnock I don't think anybody would have believed you, but it's happening today, another surreal moment in the crazy world of Scottish football. The FIFA president, Infantino, is at Loch Lomond for this big IFAB summit. He's expected to be in the VIP seats at the Smyza Stadium later on, so we'll keep an eye on that, and I think Warnock will be hoping 
the FIFA president's a good luck charm because he badly needs a win here. 2-0 home defeat to St Johnson on Wednesday came off the back of a similar loss at Kelly last weekend. I think it's fair to say Aberdeen season's in free fall. They're just now four points above Ross County are currently in the relegation playoff place. She was saying earlier they haven't in such bad form. They haven't won a league game since January 2nd. Neil Warnock's yet to win a league game. He's taken just two points from 15 since taking over. He was meant to provide this bounce, you know, to be this miracle worker, but they're actually getting worse to the point where you do wonder if Dave Cormack would make another change if they maybe lose again here today. I know that sounds crazy, but stranger things have happened. This is a really tough away match against a St Mirren team still in course to finish in the top six. They're fifth to start the day. They want to finish off a decent week. They beat St Johnson and then get that draw up at Ross County. Obviously, the controversy with the VAR up there. They've got a good record against Aberdeen. They haven't lost to Aberdeen here in four years. They beat them 3-0 at Pataudry in December and are obviously strong favourites today. So, Neil Warnock badly needs a win, but I think he's going to be up against it today. St Mander unchanged from that Dingwall match. Zach Hemming in goals. James Bolton, Alec Gogic, Marcus Fraser at the back. Elvis Bromono, Quan, Caelan Boyd Munson, Scott Tanza across midfield with Lewis Jameson and Greg Kilty in behind Mikel Mandron. Subs for St Mern are Erminsky, Dunn, Taylor, Brown, O'Hara, McMenamin, Olisania, Scott and Ayunga. As for Aberdeen, Neil Warnock's trying everything. He's made four changes today. It looks like a 3-5-2 formation. Milne, Hayes, McGrath, Clarkson all out. Nicky Devlin, Duke, Killian Phillips and Junior Hoyle are all in. So Stephen Gartman, sorry, Kelrow singles. Stephen Gartman, Angus McDonald, and Richard Jensen at the back. Nicky Devlin, Connor Barn, Graham Shinney, Kelly and Phillips, and Junior Hoyle across midfield with Duke and Bojan Majowski up front. Sons for Aberdeen are Dewan, McGrath, Clarkson, McGarry, Hayes, Sockler, Polvara, Duncan, and Mill. The referee at a very, very sunny smizer is Nick Walsh, and the VAR is Kevin Clancy. Really looking forward to that one. Neil Warnock and Aberdeen desperate for a win, but St Mirren will have other ideas. Let's go to Hibs Ross County, watched by Fraser Wishart. Yeah, looking forward to this one. Gordon, a win for today for Hibs would finish off a, a good week for the team. A win versus fellow top six challengers. Dundee last Saturday followed up by a good performance and a point in the derby at Hart. So anything other than the three points today, I think, would be unacceptable to the Hibs supporters who come here in good numbers, as always. There's been a good investment in the squad in terms of transfer fees and salaries, so top six is the minimum the fans would accept. And that important win against Dundee have given the Easter Road confidence that they can do so but inconsistency all season for Hibs has been the problem they always look like they can score there's some really good attacking players but equally they always look like they could lose a goal so it's always very entertaining at Hibs but perhaps not the kind of entertainment that the Hibs supporters want but new signings Marcondes and Mylida settled in well starting to score and if Dylan Venter can find his scoring boots today you have to fancy Hibs to get the three points but Don Kerry beginning to see positive signs from his struggling county side a vital home win against Livy and a point against St Mirren in midweek given them some breathing space between themselves and Livingston at the bottom and these points have also given them hope of catching the teams above them and with St Johnson playing Livingston today County will want to take advantage of whatever that result is by getting something here today even a point I think they'd be quite happy with they've got Taven Brophy back from injury they've got Jordan White up front scoring another goal so they're quite lively and the key today I think will be how they defend against this potent Hibs attack County haven't won in 12 away league games Hibs unbeaten in the last four but sometimes football can throw up strange results and much of that might depend on which Hibs team turns up. Hibs, unsurprisingly, are unchanged from the team that played in midweek against Hearts 4 2 3 1 formation. David Marshall in goals, Lewis Miller, Will Fish, Rocky Bashiri, and Jordan Obita at the back. Nathan Mariah Welsh and Joe Newell in the midfield with Martin Boyle, Emiliano Marcondes, and Maiziani Mayolida. But in behind the lone striker, Dylan Venter. Their substitutes Jojo Walcott, Paul Hamlin, Dylan Levitt, Eli Yuan, Chris Cadden, Eliza Mayenda, Lewis Stevenson, Adam Lafondra, and Nick Dictarios Triantis for. Uh, for Ross County, two changes. Aina drops to the bench and Simon Murray is injured. In come captain Jack Baldwin after a long absence. They'll be delighted to see him and James Brown. So a 3 5 2, a slight change of formation from Don Kerry today. George Wickens in goals, a back three, Michael Effetti, Jack Baldwin, and Ryan Leake. Five across the middle James Brown, Max Sheaf, Victor Latoury, Eli King, and Josh Reed with Eamon Brophy and Jordan White up front. Ross Laidlaw, Cameron Borthwick Jackson. Josh Sims, George Harmon, Jay Henderson, Brandon Kayla, Teddy Jenks and Loic Aina are the substitutes. And the referee today, Easter Road, is Craig Napier and the VAR is David Munro. Old pals back together, Dundee against Kilmarnock. Dave Galloway has the teams. Well, we will see, uh, Gordon, uh, what impact the 7-1 scalping from Celtic will have on Dundee this afternoon. They've suffered four defeats to the old firm this season, but have responded positively on each occasion with two wins and two draws in their next matches. Kelly are also keen to bounce back from their narrow loss to Rangers in midweek when they gave a pretty good account of themselves. Two good footballing sides looking 
to cement their places in the top six. The Dark Blues could certainly do with the three points as they have Hibbs and Motherwell right behind them, all set to pounce. But a killy victory would be a big step towards them nailing down a top half slot as the split edges ever closer. An entertaining encounter is on the cards here. To the teams then, and not surprisingly, after that 7-1 drubbing, lots of changes for Dundee. Tony Doherty has made no fewer than six of them. Now the men coming in, uh, John McCracken, Scott Tiffany, Lyle Cameron, Josh Mulligan, Aaron Donnelly and Mo Silla. Out drop Trevor Carson, Jordan McGee, Ricky Lamy, Finley Robertson, Malachi Boteng and Amadou Bakayoko. So John McCracken in goals, it looks like a 4-3-3 this afternoon. A back four then of Antonio Portales, Joe Shocknessy, Aaron Donnelly and Owen Beck. Midfield, Lyle Cameron, Mo Silla and Luke McCowan. Up top, Curtis Main, supported by Josh Mulligan and Scott Tiffany. The subs for the Ds today, uh, Legstons, Sharp, Dodgson, Astley, Bakayoko, Lamy, Boteng, Mellon and Costello. Kilmarnock, uh, like I say, they did uh, not too badly uh, despite that 2-1 defeat against Rangers. Just the one change for them, it's Robbie Dees in for Stuart Finlay. So Will Dennis in goals, across the back Joe Wright, Lewis Mayo, Robbie Dees and Corey Ndaba. Midfield, Danny Armstrong, Liam Polworth, Liam Donnelly and Matty Kennedy. Up front, it's Marley Watkins and Kyle Vassell. The subs, O'Hara, McKenzie, Watson, Balagizi, Murray, Cameron, uh, Davies, uh, Mackay Stephen and Van Veen. To the officials and referee today is Colin Stephen on VAR duties, Greg Aitken. And very quickly back to Ibrox because I know we tend to focus on the players who are involved but big news Andrew about one Rangers player who's not involved Yeah Philip Clement saying yesterday that Oscar Cortez uh, has an injury of course he came off in that game against Kilmarnock midweek well he's now confirmed in a pre-match interview that Oscar Cortez is going to be out with a long-term injury. Doesn't look good at all. Of course, he's only on loan until the summer at this point, so Rangers are going to be in contact with Lons to see what the next steps are. Potentially could need an operation as well. So you do wonder whether his season is over just by the language given by Philip Clement. It'll be one that the Rangers fans will be concerned about as well because he was very impressive in his first few appearances as well. Yep, bad news that Rangers fans Oscar Cortez looking like he's out long term we are up to speed with the team news and we'll take a look at some of the week's biggest talking points next and now a word from our podcast sponsor Lookers Motor Group they've got Jaguar Land Rover and Volvo showrooms across Glasgow and the West so you can find the new or used approved car that's right for you the Land Rover showrooms can be found in Motherwell Darnley and the north of Glasgow with their Jaguar and Volvo showroom found in Hillington and right now at lookers.co.uk you can browse and shop 24-7 value your part exchange order and take delivery from the comfort of your own home every approved used Jaguar Land Rover or Volvo comes with a minimum of 12 months warranty roadside assistance MOT test warranty an independent mileage and service history check software updates and lots more check out lookers.co.uk to get your new or used approved Land Rover Jaguar or Volvo today now back to the podcast with now you can stream all the drama from the Premier League instantly and without a contract. The stuff the dreams are made of! This Sunday, bragging rights are on the line as City take on United in the Manchester derby. Can you believe it? Get all Sky Sports channels for a day or a whole month with a Now Sports membership. Stream Manchester City versus Manchester United live this Sunday from 3.30 with Now. 18 plus Sky Sports content streamed via internet. Full terms apply. Get in pole position for cheaper van insurance. Go, go, go! With mustard.co.uk. With top insurance providers, a five minute pit stop with us could get you out in front in the race to savings. See what you could save and compare your van insurance today. With mustard.co.uk. T's and C's apply. Authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Action as it happens. And your reaction from five on the open line. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Hugh Evans, Mark Wilson, Gordon DL all in the studio. We've got the top team around the grounds. A fantastic day of Premiership action and plenty to get our teeth into down the lower leagues as well. Let's take a look at some of the 
bigger picture from this midweek now that we've got you up to speed with the team news it's getting very easy for me Fraser I don't feel like I have to be uh, very creative I feel like at the moment every week we just check in on a Saturday and see what developments if any there's been in the title race since we spoke last what can we take away from midweek well, I, th- I think you can take away that Rangers are right in this uh, this title race and they're not going to roll over, uh, perhaps as easy as they have done in many of the recent years. I, I was at the game down at Rugby Park and uh, uh, we all talk about that Jack, Jack Butlin save, but Liam Donnelly missed a couple of real chances, I think one especially in the opening minutes. Header from six yards as well and Kamarnock were up for it and for, uh, up until Tavernier scored, Rangers were, were, were rocking. Of course, just got that one bit of, bit of brilliance uh, from James Tavani and the whole dynamic changed. The fans were really up for it as well and they rode their team on, got the other goal and then saw out the game. But uh, that was a tricky game and uh, Derek McInnes was quite rightly after us, proud of the way his team played. Philip Cornwell also complimented them as well. So that was a big, big win. When you add that to the, the win last week, comprehensive win against Hearts, the th- third best team in the country, Rangers are up for, up for this and Celtic are the, the team now who can't afford any slip-ups over the next few weeks before the Oldham game. Was it one of those midweeks, David Field, where though like both sides of Glasgow could claim that that was some sort of marker or significant result? You know, the the difficulty of the fixture on paper for Rangers, the way they came back, the character shown, and then the emphatic nature of Celtic's win. Yeah, Gordon. I mean, I think both sides will take a lot from the games you just said for very different reasons. Rangers, to me, it looked like a really tricky game. It's even trickier when you're one 0 down at half time, having not played very well. So to come out. And then go in front so quickly and play with such authority in the second half. I thought it spoke a lot for what Philip Clement has done with that team. In terms of Celtic, I think Hugh said the performance fell out of the sky. I know exactly what he means, but I don't think it's any coincidence that Celtic in probably the last game and a half, you know, the second half against Motherwell, last half out against Motherwell, and then in midweek against ND, it's coincided with Cameron Carter Vickers coming back. To me, Celtic will just look a completely different team with them in the side. I think he brings so much leadership, so much security at the back. And to get a 7-1 win when Celtic were, you know, were being accused of not being entertaining and not scoring enough goals, I think it gives Celtic a huge boost going a really, really tricky game at Tynecastle tomorrow. Yeah, is that fair, Hugh? Is a, uh, we always talk about getting good cop, bad cop in Glasgow, just one of those nights where everybody was happy and everybody claimed that they should be happier than the other side. Well, uh, you know, the halftime score from Celtic Park came across like an optical illusion. 6-0. You know, for a team that you started been, cleaning your glasses, didn't you? you yeah, thought you were I seeing actually things. moved closer to the television because I thought that that looks like six 0 to me, uh, and it was an, an amazing performance. I thought Daniel Kelly's goal in the second half was outstanding. Uh, he's eighteen years old. He's out of contract in the summer. It's a real test of uh, Celtic's powers of persuasion to get him to. Sign an extension to that contract Celtic have lost young boys before To the the Bundesliga uh, And uh, Daniel Kelly Represented by Jeremy Frimprong's uh, agent So you know They have to get him nailed down Because he looks an outstanding prospect I'll be very interesting, interested To see if he makes an appearance At Tynecastle tomorrow uh, But you're right The Celtic fans at half time Delivered an ovation to the team at that point, Rangers were losing and the Celtic fans thought they could see the promised land. But Rangers came back in the second half and for the first time in a long time, you've got the feeling that it is on a knife edge. It will only remain that way if Celtic win at Tynecastle tomorrow because they have to, they're chasing Rangers and they have to chase them in a meaningful way. Any points dropped at Tynecastle tomorrow would be a major setback after what happened midweek. Yeah, we talk about fixtures on paper, Fraser, that doesn't all, always work out that way, but I think there was a feeling if we went back to this time last week, people said, this is about as tough a test as, as Rangers can face. Hearts are the third best team in the country. They're flying. Then have to go away to come Marmock. Um, they've come through that with six points. And then it almost flips back, doesn't it, onto Celtic, where you look at, again, on paper, and say, well, Tyne Castle is a real sort of standout, difficult fixture. Yeah, I think we've said it in the last, uh, last few weeks. In, in recent years, the traditional tough fixtures, if you like, for the old firm, particularly Celtic, because they've dominated our league for the last number of years, they, they just kind of roll teams over. You know, they've, they've just kind of won against Hearts and won against Aberdeen and Hibs, but, uh, but obviously Hearts are, are a, a better team this year than they have been perhaps the last couple of years in Kilmarnock. 
the surface does does make, uh, make a difference. It does. It's a challenge. I could see in Rangers because Fabio Silva up front, the ball was getting knocked long. It was bouncing around. It was you know, uh, Kelly were brilliant. It just swarming round onto the second balls as well. Barisic was getting a tough time from Dan Armstrong on, on that surface as well. They get balls in the box, so these were going to be big games, you know. And uh, Rangers have come through them, particularly the commandment game. I, I think everybody could see who's there. You know, the, the emotion and the reaction from Philip Clément. He knew that his side were struggling, you know, after 55 minutes. Start the second half, Kelly came out and played just the way they had in the first half. But then the Rangers just found a way of turning it around. And that's what, that's what happens. Sometimes they'll score one goal against either the old firm and then there's another one in within two or three minutes and the game just changes dramatically. So so for me, big game tomorrow for, for, uh, for Celtic. I, I just think that Rangers don't look like they're going to drop many points and Celtic really don't. What are we going into the old firm game? More than a couple of points behind them. So, so it's a big test for Celtic to see whether they can keep this good recent form in the last week up. Having been there and sort of witnessed it, Fraser, that sometimes when a team makes an improvement under a new manager, you always hear that phrase, don't you? That uh, fans will say, "We would have lost that last season, or we would have dropped points there early in the season." And it's a great statement because nobody can really prove it one way or the other. But was it the type of night that got that feeling? Did you see something in that Rangers team that maybe hasn't been there? Yeah, I, I, I did, and, and I think it's a valid point. You know, we all see how oh, they wouldn't have won that under Michael Beale, but they, they didn't. You know, lost one 0 at the start of the season when it was a similar type of game, but they didn't come back. Um, but it was on a bit of a knife edge for Rangers. You know, that the Jack Button save was absolutely outstanding. But there was other instances. I said earlier, Liam Donnelly, and a few other instances in the box as well where. Rangers could have been further behind but just that bit of magic from Tavernier free kick 25 yards out and it, that all of a sudden the whole dynamic changed the Rangers supporters were, were in good boys for most of the game but, but that just turned the, the notch up three or four three or four times because it was it was really behind the team and you could just see that Kamarnock were rocking for a wee while as well and then towards the end Kamarnock again came back into it, a few chances a bit of pressure in the box as well and Rangers having to defend as well so that there is a bit of a, a steal there but that, a lot of that just comes from confidence and Clement looks as if he's that type of manager who gives players confidence, who believes in his players. I think he's a, he's a, he's a bit of a disappointment as well, but not, not, not way over the top. But the players are taken to him and uh, they're certainly enjoying their football. I mean, David, it's such a different challenge for Celtic going to Tynecastle than it was midweek. But do you feel like they needed that? They needed not only a win, but a really emphatic one going into the big game tomorrow? Yeah, because there's no doubt Celtic's confidence had, I'm not going to say gone, but if you looked at some of the recent performances, even winning games, there just wasn't that flair about it, there wasn't that sort of, kind of try to think, you know, the entertainment value, all that sort of stuff. So I think to, to win so convincingly, you know, to be 6-0 up at half time, to be pl- go back to playing 3 free flowing football, and it was the same in the last half against Motherwell, it was really, really good. I just think it, it changes the entire dynamic around Celtic. I think suddenly Brendan Rodgers will be looking at players and, and they're all bursting to play and suddenly they've all got confidence. And I think if you'd have said, you know, before that game in midweek, going to Tynecastle, you know, Celtic, it's always going to be tough, but I think Celtic are in a far more confident mood now and I, I expect Celtic to go and get a result there tomorrow, Gordon. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a fascinating day for sure. Uh, a news story in the end came out of Celtic yesterday, David, actually. We debated it quite a bit on the show last night that Celtic's head of recruitment, Mark Lawwell, chief scout, had resigned uh, from the club what did you make of that your kind of reaction are you surprised timing wise what jumped out for you no, I'm not really surprised Gordon it has been rumbling on um, for a couple of weeks now you know a lot of speculation a lot of rumours am I surprised not really um, I don't know the ins and outs of the reason why Mark decided to step down I think if you look at the scrutiny on Celtic's transfers a lot of it has been pretty personal towards him I think that's a bit unfair um, yeah, he leads the scouting team, but the managers do push the buttons on the signings. And look, I think it was obviously an environment that was becoming pretty difficult um, in terms of just the, 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 as I say, the scrutiny, the focus on him. And I don't really, if that was a key reason, I don't really blame him for, for walking away and deciding to go and you know, pick up another job somewhere. I'm sure he will. He had 10 years at City Group. Um, Joe Dudgeon also left yesterday as well. I think he was of a similar mind just to go and do something different. And look, that sometimes happens when managers move on. I know a lot of Celtic fans will look at, you know, Mark Lawwell and, and Peter Lawwell as the chairman, but he, he was brought in by Ange Postacoglu. I know for a fact he did have a really, really strong working relationship with Ange Postacoglu. Yeah, it's probably not locked out in the last year um, for him, but it wouldn't surprise me to see Mark Lawwell team up again with Ange Postacoglu down the line at Spurs. Not a hugely controversial conclusion, Mark, to look at the last couple of windows if you're a Celtic fan. Feel that the recruitment hasn't been good enough 
and then analyse the position of the head of recruitment. That's just par for the course. We've said before, it's always one of those roles that we are very much on the outside. You're never really going to know what what member of the recruitment team recommends which player, what part the manager plays. We do it all the time. Is that a Brendan Rodgers signing? And is that you know we. we we d- we don't really know the ins and outs, which makes it a bit more difficult. But like I say, when it's all said and done, if you look at the last two windows, ninety nine point five percent of Celtic fans will say that they wanted some improvement in recruitment, and yeah. whether that's Mark Lawwell's sole responsibility or not, he's decided to walk away. Yeah, a lot of guesswork, assumption from outside the club on that role, and it's a, a role that's became more visible over the years. I mean, I think back to my time at Celtic, nobody had any idea. If it was a Gordon Stratton sign and Peter Lawwell was the chief exec or the head of first team scouting. But now it is so visible and probably accountable if things don't go right. And I agree with David on that. I agree it is unfair to just put it all at Mark Lawwell's feet or the head of any recruitment team's feet because there's a lot because isn't it? The player coming in doesn't he quite fit into the style, the system, the country, whatever underperforms. The manager doesn't he get the best of it. So there's a lot of people involved in a transfer. But it looks like, you know, that's what's led to Mark leaving. Um, he has resigned. He has walked away. But you look at the players he brought in compared to what was before, and it was it was always going to be very difficult to live up to what Celtic brought in before. Hatati, Kyogo, O'Reilly, Jota, Carter, Vickers, Maeda, even in there, just before he took on his role. Then you look at as Johnson, Moya, Wata, Jens. You know you go through the list: Bernardo, Palma. Now, there's still been successes in there and there might still be successes. Some are in the infancy of their Celtic career at the minute. Who knows if Palma will spark into life or, or go the other way. You know, Bernardo, will he become a permanent signing in a couple of years' time? People say, by the way, he wasn't a bad signing and he's been sold on for a huge profit. Johnson, he's not had the best season this season. Very good last season. So he's had successes, but no doubt he's had failures as well. That's what's led to him resigning. The rationale behind any transfer window is to strengthen the squad, primarily to strengthen the first team. Celtic's last two transfer windows have not achieved that target. The terminology is important. Mark Lowell was not sacked by Celtic. He resigned from Celtic. For me, resignation is an indication that all was not going well. Well, let's not worry too much longer about signings and comings and goings because it's all about who's here currently and we've got big games around the country. Three o'clock kickoffs are getting ever closer and we go back around those grounds next. The team with the biggest support in Glasgow and the West. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Hugh Evans, Mark Wilson and Gordon DL are in the studio There's a bit of a presentation going on at Ibrooks. Andrew McLean, who is being recognised there? Yeah, Stephen Davis is just down pitch side at the moment He's being inducted into the Rangers Hall of Fame He's just doing an interview that the fans are listening into at the moment Over to my left as well, there is a big banner as well from the supporters it Says Stephen Davis, MBE, 370 appearances, 140 international caps 70 assists, 28 goals, 3 League Cups, 3 Scottish Cups, 4 League Trophies He's Hall of Famer. He certainly is a Rangers legend across two spells at the club. Found a lot of success here and he's much loved by everyone in this stadium. So he's just getting a round of applause at the moment as he addresses the supporters and reflects on his time here at Ibrox. And one karaoke night out with Mark Wilson. That was missing oh, from the banner. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Remember that when I asked Mark Wilson, what's your real standout <laughs> memory of Stephen Davis's yeah. long, illustrious career? And he told us about the time that they... Went to karaoke You've got to remember the, the lighter moments in life. That's, oh, that's course, the type yeah. of insight that you're brought here for, quite frankly. So well done to <laughs> Stephen Davis. Hopefully, enjoys his afternoon. I had a lighter moment last night sitting with Gordon Duncan and with oh. Mark Wilson and uh, w- getting close to a rock star and Callum Beatty. So, uh, I saw you nodding away at some of the tunes. Uh, a few tales from last night I'm keen to explore before the end of the show, but we've got business to take care of before we get round to kick off. Let's go back to St Mirren. And Aberdeen, we're going to make like almost like making light of it, and all oh, Neil Warnock and listen to what he's got to say, and oh, now he now he really needs a win, but he really really needs a win. David Field today, doesn't he? Yeah, it's become a bit of a circus. To be perfectly honest with you, Gordon, I was down obviously for the show last week at Kelly for Aberdeen's game, and I was actually quite taken aback after the game by 
it was almost like Neil Warnock was absolving himself from any blame for the form and the results. He was just, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm here, I'm trying my best. And I know he got a lot of criticism during the week. Um, guys like Willie Miller, you know, don't get a bigger Aberdeen legend than Willie. And, he, and he, yesterday he says, oh, I don't listen to it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just here and I, I, I want to be here. I want to just help the team. But he needs to start winning games. It's almost like he's just here to scratch an itch to, oh, just to say that I, I manage a big club in Scotland. But... I don't really see where Aberdeen are going under Neil Warnock. I don't really get it, what, what they're trying to do. I don't get why Dave Cormack and Alan Burroughs decided to go down this route. Because it's just turning into an absolute circus. And if Aberdeen don't win today, they're in deep, deep trouble. And there's a good crowd here today for Aberdeen. Gone. There's a lot of Central Belt fans always take the opportunity to come and watch them at St Man. And if this goes badly today, the Aberdeen players, the chairman and Neil Warnock are going to really, really get it in the neck. I agree with David Friel. I think that if... St Mirren beat Aberdeen today The Aberdeen board have a decision to make Seriously? Yeah Like, like I know it's bad I was there on Wednesday I heard the booing But What would that be like Six six games in Five league games yeah, Or but, something Six but, league games I think But the players Are clearly not buying in To the Neil Warnock experiment And the fans certainly aren't buying into it If you continue to slide And they have No wins in their last five games <coughs> If you continue to slide closer to that relegation playoff place, that for Aberdeen Football Club is a disgrace. Yeah, and and you, you cannot have your destiny uh, in the hands of a man who is not capable of shaping your destiny in a positive way. I do get that, Fraser Wish, and I recognise a lot of what Hugh's saying, and maybe I'm being too general about it. It just feels like. Are there any circumstances under which you should look to part with a manager after six league games? Well, if they drop down, if they lose today and St Johnston win uh, and say Ross County pick up a point or two here, um, then uh, all of a sudden the pressure's on for, for that relegation place. You know, and I'm sitting in the stand at Easter Road and uh, chatting to Billy Dodge, who's one of the other broadcasters, and he was in the squad uh, many years ago when, when Aberdeen actually did end up in the playoffs. I was playing at that, that time for Hearts at that time as well. We were down there as well. So it can happen to big clubs, and uh, if, if they lose the next couple of games, I think they've got Motherwell away, and I think they've then, then got uh, Ross County, I think, coming up maybe in the next couple of weeks. So all of a sudden, they don't get a win the next couple of games, the Ross County game becomes huge. And I'm just looking at the list of, of managers as you were talking there. Dent McInnes left on the 8th of March 2021, and since then they've had Stephen Glass get less than a year, Jim Goodwin get less than a year, Barry Robson get less than a year. They've had Barry Robson and Neil Warnock in as, as interim managers and Paul Sheehan as well. It's just a list of, of, of the managers, you know, and, and Dave Cormack and the rest of the Aberdeen board have made, made those decisions. So where do they go now? Because they've gone with a young guy, Stephen Glass, who's going to bring in great football. They went with Jim Goodwin, who had done well at, uh, at, at St Mirren, and they're looking for him to bring in that kind of, that kind of strength into the team. And then they brought in Barry Robson, who I don't think was ever in the running for the manager's job when he, when he got the, the caretaker job, but did so well they gave him the job, came through the years. Where do they go now? They've now gone to a complete opposite with Neil Warnock, so they need to work out what they're going to do, but they've invested big in, in transfer fees and wages over the, the last 12 months because of the, the guaranteed European money. They're not going to be in Europe next year, so Aberdeen are really at a crucial um, fork in the road, I think. Teams you're watching today, though, Fraser, it feels like there's a lot of incentive there. Let's go Hibs first, because you almost forget that you know we're focused on can they make top six? And they're only a point off top six, so they might. The Edinburgh rivals are 21 points better off. There's almost no way that they can turn this season into a, a genuine success from here. Um, is, the ba is the battle for, for Nick Montgomery really, though, to just make top six? Would, would fans kind of swallow that? Is that minimum requirement and then just try and build again? Yeah, I think, I think they'd have to swallow that and give Nick, Nick Montgomery that chance uh, over the summertime, this new relationship or ownership or whoever in charge of, of uh, from Bournemouth as well, whether that's a good thing for Scottish football or not, that our clubs will come and feed clubs for English Premier Premier League clubs is, is another another argument, but there's going to be investment, they're going to get the benefit of good players coming from, from Bournemouth as well, so that's getting to the summertime, but you're right, the top six is an absolute minimum, and, and again you're looking at the investment in, in, the, in the team but again, but like Aberdeen the board have got to look at themselves as well in terms of the turnover of managers. You know, they just turn them over and turn them over. So Nick Montgomery is already, I think, this summer. He'll get into the summer. I, I sincerely hope so. He seems a decent bloke. 
and then come the start of next season again the pressure is going to build because he's going to be backed and he's going to get players and it's about turning those players into into a, a really good team and they've got something Hibs there's something here you can see it when every time I watch them there's, there's always something happening on the park unfortunately for Hib supporters sometimes it's at the wrong end there's goals going in at the wrong end so if, if they're looking at their squad if they can keep this together add a couple of players maybe bring in a, a, a centre back or a couple of centre backs they might have something next season but you're right this year it's about getting top six and I went today Dundee not winning against Kilmarnock and they're in the top six and I think Hibs are favourites to get that final place Let's hear from some of the managers involved these were the pre-match thoughts of Neil Warnock If you win your own battles and the result don't come you can't, you know, you, you can't ask any more and fans will always, always support you like that in, in fairness I don't think anybody's not tried I think we've, we've had a lot of uh, demoralising goals against that have really knocked our confidence at times and uh, just when we're on top you know they seem to have you know knocked us a little back but I'm, I'm, I'm you know I think we've just got to be positive and uh, that's what I'm going to try and instill you know let's have a go when we can I know we'll be under pressure from the way St Mirren are but you know I think we've just got to go there and and give them a good game. Aberdeen have got a lot of good players you know, Aberdeen are a good side, yeah, they're in a moment that they're they're not getting the results that they want at the minute. But if you look through their squad and the money that's been spent on their squad and, and putting that together, then you know, they it only takes one moment to, to cause you a problem. And as I say, I've I've got total respect for them. There'll be certainly no underestimation on, on our part. We know that we have to be right at the very top of our, our game, which we weren't on Tuesday night. Um saying that we had 60% possession and we played in front of them too much we didn't deliver balls into areas and our, our quality of delivery wasn't what it has been so we need to improve on Tuesday to get a result and we're, we're under no illusions that was a, a tough, tough game That's you pretty much set pre-match then we'll keep a close eye on St Johnston Livy because that is huge at the bottom we said it because we meant it every game today carrying a real significance as we tick towards the end of the season kick-off coming next we'll go back to Ibrox winning team all season long this is Clyde One Super Scoreboard Minutes away from kickoff across the Scottish Premiership and beyond let's build up to the kickoff at Ibrox it's Rangers against Motherwell Andrew McLean is there yeah, just waiting for the teams to make their way out the tunnel at the moment here at Ibrox an expected an expectant crowd I should say and no wonder given the recent form Philip Clamonti has the belief of these Rangers supporters will be hoping that they listen to his words as well this week he's asking them to stay right to the end of games here some fans are liable to head out early to get the subway to beat the traffic but he's asking the supporters to stay right until the end he, he's hoping his side as well will be able to put in the type of performance that will keep fans on the edge of their seats for that full 90 minutes as well like they did against Hearts last weekend I think a lot of people thought that it was going to be a tougher game than it was but Rangers showed real quality in that match, obviously had to show different qualities during the week as well to get that victory away to Kilmarnock after going a goal down up against Motherwell today who do make it tricky when they go to the likes of Ibrox and Celtic Park, they've competed well against both of those sides away from home this season, I'm sure as well there will be a lot of eyes on Lennon Miller, the 17 year old, he's really impressed this season but especially so in the last 7 days with his performance against Celtic last weekend and his midweek performance as well, the players now out on the pitch shaking hands, I'll read you the team lineups that have been chosen by both managers four changes for Philip Clement Barisic, Lawrence, Cortez and Silva all drop out it is a long term injury for Oscar Cortez as well as confirmed by Philip Clement just before the game in come Yilmaz, Raskin, Sterling and Dessert, so it's Jack Butland in goal for Rangers, the back four James Tavernier, Connor Goldson, John Sutter and Red Van Yilmaz, the two holding midfielders John Lundstrom and Nicholas Raskin, it means that Mohamed Diamandi will have a bit more of an attacking role in this game as the number 10, Ross McCausland on one side, the versatile Dujon Sterling on the other, Cyril Dessers is the lone striker today, the substitutes McCrory, Silva, Jack, Lawrence, Wright, Roof, Davies, Balligan and Barisic, two changes for Motherwell coming into this one, Adam Devine is on loan from Rangers so he can't play in this game, he drops out of the starting lineup as well as Sam Nicholson, in comes Shane Blaney and Jack Vale, so it's going to be Liam Kelly in goal, the back five Stephen O'Donnell, Paul McGinn, Bevis McGabby Dan Casey and Shane Blaine in midfield three, Davor Zravskovsky, Lennon Miller and Blair Spittle, the two up top, Theo Bear and Jack Vale, the substitutes Oxborough, Gent, Obika Halliday, Shaw, Nicholson, Elliot Ferry and Wells, the referee for this one at Ibrooks 
is Alan Muir. The VAR is Ewan Anderson. And we are just about to get underway here at Ibrox. Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes with M&D Green Pharmacy. New year, new start. Quit the cigarettes with the smoking cessation programme. Right, come on then, let's see what you three have in your locker. Start with Ibrox, give me your predictions for today. Don't forget St Johnson Livy is an important one as well. Home win Rangers. Mm-hmm. Home win St Mirren. The Aberdeen misery to continue for me. Hibbs home win against Ross County. Dundee against Kilmarnock. Away win Derek McInnes. And a draw in Perth St Johnston Livy I'm different from you this week Hugh we were two weeks in a row the same I'm going to go for Rangers home win a draw for Neil Warnock's Aberdeen away at St Mirren I'll go for a Hibs win against Ross County a draw up at Dens Park and I'll go St Johnston home win against Livy Right, it's a full house at Ibrox, uh, Rangers. I'm going. Some motherable fan you are. Yeah, I've got to. There's no point kidding myself on. Just hope for the best. St. Martin Aberdeen. Neil looked very positive on the bus, I've got to say. I'm going to <laughs> draw. It's Neil now, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, the lad. Um, I'm going for Hibs. Home <laughs> no, what was it you called? Was it the lad? lad yeah. He referred to Stigilis Thursday night He referred to 75 year old Neil Warnock yes, As the lad I was listening Superb Yeah that's how I think he recognised me I thought today. of myself as a 74 year old lad Straight yeah, away you've got to You think uh, uh, Positive Hibs to beat Ross County I'm going This is my surprise one I'm going for a home win Dundee Kilmarnock Oh And I'm going for a home win St Johnson Okay I don't mind that at all We're underway At Clyde SSB If you want to tweet you can agree or disagree with those predictions. We'll stay in touch with each other throughout the afternoon and we'll have your say on the open line a bit later on as well. Uh, some interesting football, some interesting spectators. I've had a message in from Paul McNeil. It's a picture of his young son with Gianni Infantino oh. at Paisley. He says he's definitely a saint. <laughs> That's a strange one, eh? For all, all the games to go, he's surely going for hell. Gianni, that's, that's where the real action is going to be. Well, especially... Oh, how is this for a start? What? Goal flashes. With M&D Green Pharmacy. St Mirren. Nil. Aberdeen you. won. And it's Mark Wilson's breaking protege, Connor Barron. 60 seconds on the clock. It's a screamer. 30 yards. Top corner. That is what Neil Warnock was looking for. Gianni Infantino stands up and says, Today I am a Don <laughs> at the sign of that Connor Barron goal. If, it was a great they, run by Duke. Gogic cleared it out. Bang. Great finish. If they lose, it'll be the Don's manager by five o'clock. But that is an. Sensational start for Aberdeen Totally out the blue Unexpected Call it what you will uh, Now Now where do we all go from here? I'd like that If um, if it did go wrong Then Neil Warnock could walk in and say Today I am resigning <laughs> Yeah, yeah I Today like I am a specky tube I just want to know How how Scottish can we make it That famous Jenny Infantino What was that in the World Cup wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it was, it was I can't believe he survived that I can't believe he's still to say Head. the least Yeah Unreal but the, but tr- Where is he Lock Holman this weekend Yeah yeah. But truthfully nice for a meeting you, know, you, you were there Gordon You were at Pataudry Ooh. midweek I mean 90 excruciating minutes For Aberdeen And they come right Out the traps After a 2-0 defeat From St Johnston And a, a go in front I, I'm shocked uh, Cyril Dessos Took a bit of a bang Early on at Ibrox A bit of a dead leg Or something He's Gone off for a bit of treatment But I don't think the the medical staff or Cyril Dessers are very impressed about it. Referees having a bit of an argument there as they wait for Cyril Dessers to come back on. So nothing really doing in the Ibrox sunshine. Look at that. The Palmerston Pep. What? Oh, out yeah, the trap. One up Alexander Ferguson. Well, that's not famous like Scottish know. football name. Oh, he needs a win today. Who are you though, doesn't today he? Didn't Sterling you? Albin. Oh, that'll be good. Ah, uh, Partick Thistle won Dundee United nil. Brian Graham on three minutes. That's a good start for your employer, Mark. Very good start. So yeah. Jim is your mate. Yes, he yes. Oh, I like yeah. every, everyone in that fixture. I like oh, Mole yeah. Cobb. Jim's my mate. My employer. Some Who you want to win? Uh, oh, Thistle <laughs> Thistle Of course Thistle yeah, Come yeah, on crawler. I was torn Because I've told you many times That my brother-in-law Plays for Stirling Albion And I spoke to him yesterday And I thought 
obviously, usually that's where loyalties would lie. Could we do that to Big Marv? Could we? Oh, you've could, got could to go away with family. But then Marv won't come for Wednesday show <laughs> yeah. and I'll have to chase some yeah. other pundits. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> you've got to weigh these things up, what your priorities really are. But anyway, a long way to go in that one. A lot of goals in Scotland early on. Spartans won East Fife nil. Corner Motherwell, but they've had the ball in the better areas inside the opening minutes at Ibrox. But you'd have to say though, Dundee United lost midweek to Airdrie at home. You cannot be going about losing in this fashion. You know, Wraith Rovers really made a mess of it against our Broth last night. This is Dundee United's chance to go three clear. They cannot come out of Mary both, Hill not having done that. Both of them at the top of the league. Incredible. Uh, uh, it's weird because it's so good for so long mm. and then just hitting a shaky spell. The, the disappointing Gabby, Gabby thing, heads over, sorry. This point thing is for Thistle that their poor results coincided with Dundee United and Wraith's poor result. If they had just kept winning, it would have been a whole lot closer. I'm being very loose with the comparison here, but remember when Hearts won the championship and like they won it, but it just was not convincing enough for loads of the fans and they, they got grumpy about it and then they ended up coming up and doing well when they, they got there you get the feeling looking at Wraith's reluctance to take advantage that Dundee United are going to do this still yes. they're just not in much style not in sparkling form mm. but I think they will have enough to go over the line they've got to fall over the line but they need to start uh, picking up results I know one or two Ooh, United Liam fans Liam Kelly gets happy. away with one he rushes to the edge of his box the ball bounces past him mm. and Mugabe has to hook it away uh, from Dessers I know the Motherwell goalkeepers Come in for a little bit Of criticism this season um, He does get away with it But not uh, Not a classic And sure. it doesn't come to anything At the moment Let me give you your teaser please you okay. are, You're going to give them it The first half teaser With the Scottish Sun.co.uk Slash football For the best football news And opinion online Here's a cheeky wee one for you can you name five current Scottish Premiership players who have represented their country at a major tournament and at the Olympics? Five current Scottish Premiership players who have represented their country at a major tournament and at the Olympic Games. Oh, that's a tough it's not one. the Winter Olympics, is it? <laughs> <laughs> now that would be a teaser yeah. there you go. Any Scottish Premiership players taking part in the bobsleigh before? Oh, I'm yeah. not sure um, But it's a good question from Hugh At Clyde SSB You need to give all the names on one tweet And you need to do it quicker than everyone else So in true Olympic fashion On your marks, get set, go See that there? We've got the Indoor yeah. Athletics World Championships oh, in Glasgow yeah. I well. love that I love that. I've, I've been watching Did it you all see the long jumper almost land on the rake? Yeah, that would have been a <laughs> short one raking the sand pit And he nearly landed on it Yeah, he wouldn't be jumping today if Ooh. he landed on it Do you know what I, think I find very surprising? It wouldn't have suited me See the 70 yard run at the finish line, you've got to run up and throw yourself onto the board. Well, not the boards, the pattern, mm -hmm. to sh slow you down. Well, well what, what else would you... Well, you think they'd have a bigger the runway. Just don't, the the door, the don't the see, You don't see that in the Olympics, do you? Well, it's the World it's it's Championship. Indoor. It's indoor, it's indoor. Make it make it bigger, make it longer. I love the... But you want them to rebuild the arenas that they're in and make it longer I, because you could, could harm somebody Mark I was watching last night they get a big pad a big crash no, mat yeah, crash yeah, mat you get in school I love oh, the 8 out well, of 15 8 of 15 that's we've got an early goal mm. at Ibrox Whoa. goal flashes with M&D Green Pharmacy feed the bear and he will do mm. the rest it's Theo Bear mm. in off the post Motherwell had started bright and they've got the goal. It was a mix-up at the back from Rangers that allowed them in. And Theo Bear's impressive goal-scoring form continues. It's Rangers nil, Motherwell one. Well, flabber my gasp for a second time. Aberdeen a goal up in the minute. Rangers a goal down. This is incredible stuff. You, I would not have put two bob on Motherwell scoring at Ibrox at any stage today. Third highest scorers in the league. Why mm, would you not yeah. have faith that the third highest scorers in the league could score? I'm not saying win the game. No. But if that suggests if there's any team, apart from Celtic, that's going to score at Ibrox, it would be Motherwell. Well, I just thought that uh, the crowd, everything about Rangers midweek, the, the momentum, the, the fact that Clement can clearly see the title at the end of the, the road here. But... To be a goal down, first of all, 100% credit to Motherwell. 
and I can imagine the atmosphere inside Ibrox now. The, the the whole mood will have changed. I thought the way Motherwell started against Celtic in that first forty five minutes was looked really good. You know, they, they had a clear plan what to do to try and get in behind Celtic last week. Now I don't know if it's taken on the same form, but definitely created chances within that and Bear played a crucial role <coughs> within that. Again, I don't know how the goals came about, but Theo Bear after Christmas is come into some run of form. Yeah, I was watching Motherwell train yesterday. I can't take credit. Sorry, I was just going to say to, to describe the goal to you yeah. and to Mark. Um, <coughs> I was going to say before the game that the Bear and Vale partnership, you know, if Motherwell were, were going to get up the pitch, because Jack Vale's come in and been really good. good. It's, good it's week, excellent yeah. from him. Too strong for John Suter. Rangers will be really disappointed. Suter commits. Vale just sort of shrugs him off, plays the ball across. And Bear fires it in off the post. I've been I've been impressed with Vale. Uh, get a good goal against Livingston. A uh, good header, composed. Um, See on one. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Blackburn. Blackburn, good player. Good Did you player. not hear Andy Halliday's story about him? No. So it's often said I wouldn't dare make cheap, stereotypical digs at you footballers, but that your talent can often be in your feet. All right. Yeah. And maybe yeah, you yeah. don't. Maybe maybe thinking is not always you know. I would agree. Part of the. What do you think? I'm with you. Come on. <laughs> what you're saying is the boys said they switched off. Yeah. He, you remember the three all at Pataudry? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he get they get back on the team bus, and someone says to Jack Vale, "So what did you think of Pataudry?" And he says, "What one was he? What position did he play?" <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that's good. But he's very oh, good at that. football so oh, far. So that's um, that's the brilliant. important thing. <laughs> <laughs> he is very good uh, I mean last week again I thought he ran his, his heart off um, Contributed to the game massively And again the day he started well So a good sign in that But th- there is a th- there's still a, there's a feeling about Ranger Hugh And yeah. when Motherwell were jogging back into the half And Rangers were putting the ball down Ibrox kind of erupted as if to say Come right, on Come on let's get back yeah. into this And there is plenty of time But a great start for Motherwell We've said it a few times but Theo Bear One goal at St Johnson He felt he didn't get A fair chance mm. To be fair to him Signed for Motherwell Motherwell fans Neutral observers Everybody saying It's not a very Inspiring signing It's now his 11th league goal Of the season mm. I was one of those I'll put my hand up When, when he I... had to play Second fiddle to Mika Bireth In the first yeah. half of the season Yeah when I When I seen him He got off to a good start He got his first goal Up at Dundee Didn't he First half and then he sort of disappeared a little bit and I watched him a few times and thought to myself you know where's mother we'll go to get the goals but all credit to him he's been absolutely it's brilliant it's his ninth since Christmas yeah he's been brilliant he's he's just, I don't know why he go for his Christmas but it's certainly worked <laughs> Goal Flashes with m and Green Pharmacy there's something about goals in off the post today and Dundee have taken the lead Tony Dock gets one over on his old pal for now and Derek McInnes and it's Scott Tiffany He's been in amongst the goals recently In off the post Great done A great run I should say Down the left Cuts inside In off the post Might have hit the goalkeeper Is it one of those That goes down as the, the own goal I'll find out for you But either way Dundee lead Kilmarnock By a goal To nil Well up to the Dazzler he, He's forecast yeah. a home I was, my, I was my nap today That'll do it on I the hope a lot of people took uh, The advice I, I gave At Aye. 3 o'clock I'm sure they would have But an early goal mm. See after coming off Losing seven and being at the game yeah. for so long, you're and you're coming up against Kilmarnock. You know that could have been a tricky one. Just a bad night all round, though. Do you see the story with the team bus? Yeah. Oh, to break down or something. It London, down Road. On London Road. So Celtic's team bus had just dropped Celtic off. I had to go and pick the Dundee players up. They must have been rubbing their hands. Oh. Up. And then there's a difference in buses as well as budget. They were only for two minutes. Ah, but bit of comfort. Hold, then, hold on, what do you mean they picked them up? They took them back to Dens. No, no, it was before, the, before the game. Before the game. Before the game. Before the game. And then right. done these. That's why they didn't they park the bus. <laughs> <Had> to get, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The plan oh, was right. on the window. That's why they shipped seven. Oh, I there was no bus to park. C- Celtic Park has been known for a lot of people to break down there. I, I remember that Yeah it was, I was horrendous. I remember That's right I For people who are unfamiliar on. With the story Gordon DL got a new car And it had The start stop technology And the Button for the ignition And he, he basically <laughs> Didn't turn his car off uh, And went to an entire game At Celtic Park And came back To find his battery <laughs> Imagine people Suitably drained it, In the car park I mean, It was embarrassing This car's wrong I was embarrassing I've got to say 
Airdrie nil, Queen's Park 1 Dom Thomas with the goal As suspected by Dave Galloway's description I think that might have gone down as a Will Dennis own goal Is that in fashion at the moment? See Mitov had one the other yeah. one he, last weekend didn't he? Um, but anyway I don't think the managers or the fans care too much It's Dundee 1, <coughs> Kilmarnock 0 So lots happening in the top flight already Apart from Fraser Wishart who says 12 gone, nothing happening Oh dear mm. so, Plenty of time But a big crowd there I'll, t- I'll tell you that Oh I'm sure Since There's, you're obsessed Yeah I'm obsessed with the Hibs crowd I, I think they Let's can. hope there are no objects getting chucked No no that was poor that was Hibs poor. fans oh. It's a really problematic um, line between scenes we don't like to see and But that was pretty funny when he caught the pie and ate it yeah. There's obviously a serious element to this See if they just threw pies uh, but I still don't know if we should like no. actively encourage no. that But no, I do but, get what you but, mean the, the, Leading to the more serious point But we have a problem in Scott, Scottish football We have a, a problem with serious misbehaviour yeah. And uh, we, the, we should not deny it And not live in a state of denial We've got a problem that far too much of that goes on I mean, The bottle opener is grim mm. isn't it yeah, Really it really grim when you see that And you know what See when you see Lauren Chatham What about his reaction though To yeah. dodge that And he's yeah. lucky He's got such good reactions Because that would have left it's like the open. The, And again yeah. like, Not to make light of it But The pie was Like Verging on Understandable like, I mean I wouldn't throw a pie myself But that sort of reaction The bottle opener's ridiculous yeah. Let's not even Give that any more attention Than it deserves the AirPod. Who throws an AirPod? Expensive stuff. I know. That's... Just out the ear and, and like. Yeah. Vent and... That's just one of them ones off Wish <laughs> or something like that. Maybe you know, other discounted websites ones. are available. Hi. You need, I want your man to do rough. A man of your. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Stature. No, someone who's um, efficient Stature. with their money. <laughs> shall we say? Right, okay. Thrifty. Thrifty. You wouldn't be chucking away AirPods, would you? Absolutely not. I wouldn't have chucked my pie away. I, I, I think I've, I would have been a now bit disappointed. a very interesting point there because the cost of catering inside football grounds now is going up and up and up. So oh, somebody's bought the pie. Me. I got a fright at Pitodri the other night. Oh, you Did told you have to me. Buy a pie? Not, I used to think of myself as a man of the people go to these football games, but I'm stuck in here with you all the time. It wasn't even a pie, it was a bag of sweets. I nearly had to remortgage oh, yeah. myself to go. Yeah, I've get, seen this. Oh, Telling you, I told you the other night. That's the putting up the prices to pay off all the managers to keep getting rid of. There's every chance. Aye, everything's getting inflated, so they can pay off Barry Robson, probably Jim Goodwin still, Neil Warnock's next. And mm. my day it was all macaroon bars and spear, yeah. spearmint gum, spearmint chewing gum. That's all they sold at the. I should they'd come up, get your macaroon bar and your spearmint <laughs> yeah. gum. Get your macaroon bar. Yeah. Right? And he so, tries to tell us to take his era of football know, seriously. I know. Unbelievable. Right. And you would go, I don't know why no, they chewing No back why, would they, why would they sell and chewing them? I, just because it was exciting And you could move your oh, How chewing them was exciting? <laughs> oh, oh, imagine I, living in your days Oh, I, cause, <laughs> cause, cause, oh You would always go with your pal to the games And you, you know at Fir Park Because that's where I used to go And you would say Right it's your turn this week For the macaroon bars and the spearmint gum there but it was go. never your turn I know that exactly. when, did, uh, when did chewing gum come out then? You must remember When, when did chewing gum come out? Hi well, like, As an invention Hi Do you remember well, the leftovers? I, I was born in the 1940s And there was chewing gum All of my life Was there? Right okay <laughs> What? 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 <laughs> this okay. show never fails to Just in case it was a more recent The roads that we go down Recent thing I do remember leftovers I, I, I got a few dice Mr. Mr. Uh, he's a leftover Bit of a poor attempt there from Cyril Dessers. It was a header from a Yilmaz cross. He really should have done better. But that tends to be the story with Dessers. He gets a lot of chances, so there's every chance that he will go on to. He needs four chances to score one. And, you know, he's got enough goals on his CV at Rangers to to say, fair enough. Yeah. If you need four chances, fair enough, because you're scoring plenty. And Don't get me wrong. Some. By the way, just this is not in the sitter territory or anything like that. But just to let you know, uh, right, there was a a hint of a delay or a VAR check for a penalty to St Mirren, uh, but didn't get asked to go to the monitor, so no penalty there. If any of the injustice from the handball midweek is lingering on, oh. Stephen Robinson will be extra frustrated, I am sure. It wasn't a vintage decision, was it? it sounds like no, no, it was a terrible decision. But uh, the the game. Today's game sounds like a, a decent watch mm. for David Friel. Do you watch it Tuesday here? Oh, it's shocking. I, honestly, I I wouldn't have let myself go to bed at midnight as a punishment for watching <laughs> the second half. 
That's it. You talk up Scottish football for us. I've got to be honest. It was the worst game standard. And if you're listening, it was ridiculous. What about the handball decision? Oh, that was terrible. I was terrible. I felt for St. Mim, but it was one of those decisions that just. They didn't notice it. They played on and on, and it really. But St. Man, the way they hit penalties, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. But the second half was ridiculous. Diomande has shown he has an eye for goal from distance. He's just robbed Blair Spittle, and he's hit one goal. Word is a fairly straightforward save for Liam Kelly. Twenty-five yards out, couldn't find the corner like he has done on two other occasions. Uh, and on we go. Still Rangers nil, Motherwell one. That Theo Bear goal giving Stuart Kettlewell a great start. The, the psychology of it, Mark, because you've been on two sides, you've been there with Dundee United, you've been there as the bigger team. As a Celtic player, the... Hugh Keevans, oh, he's thrown his hands up in the air. <laughs> I thought he was really annoyed at something I'd said, then I realised that Brighton have gone a goal down. OK, now I spot it. Um, a bit like the game against Celtic last week, Mark. When you take the lead early, it can't be described as a bad thing. But does it almost play with your head a bit in terms of game plan? And I saw so many Motherwell fans complaining late in that game. Oh, why have we decided to sit back oh, when I it's know. clearly not? It's not a conscious decision. It's the worst argument. It's one I used to hate. But it's just an automatic reaction. And you've got to remember the opposition you're playing against, how good they are as players, and you know what they're trying to get out of the game. Of course, they're going to take the game to you. Um, and it gets so difficult because you're drawn towards your own goal that's what happened to Motherwell last week and Celtic made them pay um, early on in the game just now it's slightly different I remember going to uh, Ibrox with Dundee United my first spell there and I think we went 1-0 up within 7 minutes Stuart Duff scored and I honestly I remember this day looking at the clock thinking long way to go wow right we'll not celebrate too much but every pass in 10 minutes Sounds obvious. You're looking at the big clock going, right, okay, that's ticked off. That's it. You get to half time. But even when you're coming out for the second 45, you're just expecting an onslaught. And it's hard to get out sometimes. We managed to hold on that night. I don't know how. It was one of the you know, the rare occasions I went there with Dundee United and won. Motherwell will be home for the same, but extremely difficult. I'm thinking back to the first caller, Super School Board, Tuesday night. He baffled you, Gordon, and the, you, Gordon, the other Gordon. Uh, by trying to prove that Rangers were having a bad season and that uh, you know that there was too much criticism of Celtic, and uh, he'll be he'll be calling in at five o'clock if Mother will win this game one 0 Well, plenty of time for things to change, but it has been a good start for Motherwell there. That goal to the good, good start for Aberdeen. They needed it. An absolute screamer from Connor Barron, a stunning early strike, very early, sixty odd seconds on the clock there in that one and Dundee have the lead against Kilmarnock nothing between Hibs and Ross County or St Johnson Livy either nothing doing in that one so well, I'd keep you an eye teaser. yeah why not I forgot about the teaser can you name five current Scottish Premiership players who have represented their country at a major tournament and at the Olympic Games ok a dipping Yilmaz effort from distance saved by Liam Kelly so Rangers trying to get themselves back on level terms. You struggling with the question today, Gordon DL? Not like you? Yeah. You're more of a who am I man though, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, really? I'll, I'll destroy that in the second half. Uh, <laughs> right, let's see what we've got. Derek FM's given it a good go, but he's gone for Jack Butland. Not yeah. there. So he wasn't part of that Team GB um, squad, I guess. Remember that? Anybody from Scotland getting that? No. no. Uh, and they're all English, were they not, apart from. Were they? Bale? Bale? Giggs? Or Giggs? Something like that. Yeah, and Bellamy. <laughs> right, okay. Something like that, I think. Actually, I went to some of the. I went to one of the Olympic Games, but I don't think it was Team GB. It was Brazil and someone at Old Trafford. Did you get near the Olympic Village at any time? No. Well, no. I was. <laughs> I was thinking that. Um, Chris Kellen went um, with New Zealand, and he loved it. The, Olymp aye. the Olympic okay, Village, aye, did he? What did they say they got up to? Just what, like straight, like board James games and stuff like that. Night. It was very. It was just a good opportunity friendly. to meet like people from around the world and just get to know them. That sort of thing. Great. Yeah. He says that uh, it was. Did he? Did he? Did, no, he genuinely. Loved it. He genuinely he, loved yeah. it. He says it was. Just, <laughs> it was just like uh, a night out. Aye, a night out. <laughs> yeah. Constantly. Oh, and right. you're just mixing with loads of different. Mixing right yeah. enough. Aye. Right. Okay. And we'll move on. Uh, what else have we got? Aussie boy wants to throw in Miller. I don't really know. Oh, maybe Lewis Miller. He means no. No. Something that might give you a wee clue as to the 
direction you want to go down. Uh, Hatati trick hero wants to throw in Borna Barisic. Not there. Right, OK. Uh, bit of a delay there. Dessers was adamant his shirt was pulled as a cross came in. Uh, but play on in the end. Spartans 1, East 5 1, Alan Troughton. Keep your guesses coming at Clyde SSB. Well, 25 minutes in at Ibrox, you know, and Dessers was trying his luck to see if he can get a penalty. And you can imagine the crowd, uh, the atmosphere will be cranked up a good bit because this was the last thing the Rangers fans saw as well. Ooh, the Palmerston Pep has been each. leveled up. Queen of the South 1, Sterling Albion 1, Josh McPake. On 27 minutes, I think that's two goals and two games for the new Sterling Albion signing there. See if he goes at this rate, we're not going to see him again on a Wednesday night. <laughs> I look forward to Wednesday night's my bath night. I know it is, yeah. And I, I like li- listening to the big mm. guy, uh, but it's just not happening for him just now. <clears throat> and the board have all agreed to step down. Yeah, that's right. The Queen of the South? Yeah, yeah. full board, yeah. Is that right? Mm. So he's run the club. Mar- Marv? Yeah. Oh, he'll know Saki so will he? Manager. I know Caretaker. a director of football that's been out of the Work job for a while. That was brilliant at that one. Get those, get those cheap Nike boots dusted You've off. Still got them. Get I've on got the them in the back of my car. I will get them back. They were, they were Just great. Just you and Marvin mixing at the. I would the, help them the same way. The gym. I usher in the cafe. I told discounts. you before you were good at Airdrie. You went where we said to the Sahara <laughs> Desert to break in Sahara Sid. Uh, Sahara <laughs> Sid. <laughs> I've told and you Anyway he's moved into A new line of work He's moved into events It was him He was the one that was behind The Willy Wonka experience <laughs> In Glasgow last week By the way Petition up to, to bring it back like 4,000 To bring it back It's honestly that like, I, I can't stop going. looking if at it If gets brought back I, I can't stop going. looking at all the stuff And because I always Because I spend all my life in here I keep thinking like Could you lot create it We said last night there's Grandpa Joe right there yeah. in yeah, the corner. Shirt. Hugh Keevans yeah. has actually got Grandpa Joe's shot sure on. Yeah. He's quite I'm happy to take that mantle what on. I'm a bit confused out of you two is which one of you. See, it's, it's mostly you. I don't really know where he fits in, Mark Wilson. But Gordon right. Deal, I can't decide if you are Willy Wonka, I'll or if you're Wonka. the, or if you, or if he's the unknown. <laughs> I don't know. You know the, the one with the mask on. Hi, Uncle Gordon. Have you seen the unknown? <laughs> I've never seen it, Gordon. I've no idea. How are you the only about? person in the world that's unaware of this story? He's I've never seen the film I've never seen the film No but forget the film I, I, the, the unknown is known the film either That's just popped up at the Glasgow version <laughs> oh, right, Of okay. this show The guy's obviously had a hole in his script and thought He's just put this random put character, character, in. character in And he's a sort of mysterious scary figure With I'll like a silver ahead, mask and long hair Because you have said in the show before you, You're quite into dressing up Not, not like that like, oh, 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 as, In terms of you want to be a mascot Remember you said that Yeah. So you could be the unknown in the Willy Wonka experience Yeah well, I'm I'm sitting here waiting for my big uh, debut with the. Remember he the play? Is perfect, Gram- Look at Grandpa Joe there, grandpa just quiet Joe. in the yeah. corner. He's perfect yeah. for it. Yeah, well, I am a grandpa, so I'm half the way there. You don't like chocolate though, which is a bit problematic. Uh, grandpa Joe, <coughs> Joe's also my Joseph is my middle name. Very so, that. Oh, yeah. it is, it's sorted. perfectly. Although bear in mind, look, by the looks of the Glasgow show, the kids don't get chocolate anyway, so <laughs> no, they'll no. be fine. <laughs> A limited refreshments they got, didn't they? A wee quarter cup of limeade or something. Somebody like that. Uh, like send, let's send producer Michael out to the shop, see if we can get you the unknown outfit, and we'll get you to <laughs> yeah, audition. Silver hair, silver hair. Give you a look at it, and you've got the. You want to see the unknown the creepiness? Yeah. Right, okay. Let's see if I'm going to play my pop, part. Pop it through behind the mirror, and uh, I'm sure you've done that. I'm sure oh. you've told me you've done that before a few times. Yeah, I like a wee look in the mirror. There we go. Well done. You got that in your locker? It just pops out. And you have to act quite like scary and mysterious. Yeah, quite like that. You yeah. got that, do you? Yeah, I think I can I can handle that. Right, good. <clears throat> uh Yeah, we need to get a bit of need a lot of back, we'll, we'll get along. Me and you'll go along. But to uh, Willy Wonka. So you you're not you're unaware of this full thing. Have I'm, you ever I'd, seen the I've got a Netflix life. documentary The Fire Festival? Yes. Think probably. of this as being like Glasgow's answer to the Fire Festival. Right. Right? With kids chucked in <laughs> just for extra <laughs> disappointment. With, with kids' tears thrown in. <laughs> just as like a. Yeah, an extra bonus. So it's not the best, is that what you're trying to It wasn't what it w- was it advertised to be, okay. basically. Right. I'm oh. surprised this is. Honestly, it's genuinely made like headlines in America and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, well. I've My two that. youngest grandchildren are raging because they weren't taken to it. They, they, it's a badge of honour to have been there. Uh, that's it people are now trying to get involved and go yeah, back I and get always it, get it so it can't back. be that bad if people but, are, but that's what, the thing it, it that was bad. but it's it's like <laughs> ironic 
<laughs> How much is it to get? It was 35 quid, that's what? the point. That's the point, that's the story. Where have you been this week? 35 quid? <laughs> well, I better watch what I'm saying, I'll be taking off air. You'll be trying to get freebies to that, I'm sure, right? No, no more goals to tell you about at the moment. Um, just double checking, no, I don't think so. Oh, Matthew's got a good idea, he says, uh, surely you're... Perma orange tan makes you an Oompa Loompa from your no you he's talking about me? you Mark Wilson <laughs> he's not he's <laughs> oh, the I'll, like, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to me the man man. Left, yeah. Matthew's right your sports scene oh, makeup sports scene by the way could, can I? you're Actually. the Oompa Loompa you're the unknown you're Grandpa Joe and I like that I don't know we'll Oompa. find a Willy Wonka Oompa. out the rest Oompa. of the the cast <laughs> Aye, uh, aye, my, my makeup, yeah, I had a. You've not been invited back onto sports scenes? No, it's not a makeup that. incident. Not that. That. That's what happens when you, you get handed a bag of makeup and you've never done it in your life. He's, they um, said his punditry was good, but that <laughs> face cannot <laughs> go on TV again. face was two tone. Because I tuned in actually on, would that have been Wednesday, no, Sunday night to sports scene? Oh, mate. And I heard that you, I heard you on co, -com co, -com. co commentary. Oh, you so that makes sense because you don't get Terrible. to see your face. Keep me off off camera. At yeah, that point, yeah, right. Yeah, okay. but, that, that's knowledge. not your gig. Co-coms Oh you were terrible <laughs> Oh my oh, god The feedback, the feedback <laughs> I'm getting you, oh, I'm giving you good feedback I thought, I thought you were alright Feedback a, I'm getting is positive a, As a friend All positive do not, do not put yourself in that position yeah, I thought you were yeah, fine I'll be covering the big ones soon Don't worry You Tune, tune in tomorrow night <laughs> Again, I'm back Are you back tomorrow? <laughs> Are you? I can't have been that I'm bad I'm back For exactly. a heart Celtic game? Well, yes I'll be there And what are you doing? Just what we've been speaking about co -coms. Yeah for the last five minutes <laughs> Oh my Thanks good Thanks for listening ah, I can't watch that <laughs> um, Ibrook's not happy Or most of it Dan Casey slides in Does win the ball But catches McCausland On the follow through Which as we know Is problematic But no free kick given Looked a sore one and, uh, Sounds like the crowd Are getting tetchy As they would but I one think it was just sure. more A reaction to that To that challenge if, Than anything If it stays the same Come on we'll change it At half time yeah. I don't think there's You know any doubt about that The way he goes about his business By the way if things were that bad and they were playing poorly, he would change it even before half time. He's a manager that doesn't hang about. So. Yeah, I don't, listen, I don't think it's but a particularly bad performance yet. They just happen to be uh, behind. Oh, Hugh Keevans, the sigh that you heard there was Fulham going 2 0 up against Brighton. You see, Deserbi and his spiky hair are annoying me now. I, I think it's time for the chop. <laughs> well, his hair. Oh, he's, him. Yeah. Him. Him. The results him, are not. Him. Oh. Behave. He's been. I, Get There's a man yeah. that doesn't hang about Hugh get, Keevans Get him out Do you know who else is not out. hanging about The Ackies And they've been getting a lot of sticks recently But Kelty nil Hart, uh, Hamilton Ackies 3 Akeem Rose on 32 minutes A flying start there The problem is They ain't catching Falkirk are they? No, no. Not a chance now I think disappointment Was that last week through the week As well um, That's going to be the earliest League win In Scotland this season isn't it? But By some distance you have to win it. How many but, games? Oh, it's, it's a bit early to forecast that exactly But what were they 14 well, clear going into today Is it more than that Anyway Montrose 1 Alloa 1 Taylor Stephen with the goal On 32 minutes As Ross McCausland Walks off gingerly At Ibrox Not going well Is that another Rangers one of those way. And is that another one of those words? Does anyone ever walk gingerly apart from on a football pitch when they've just received a heavy tackle? Exactly. Do you don't see anyone what walking do down the street Do you say oh, Look at, He's walking gingerly and then what is the meaning behind it? gingerly? Yeah, G bubbling type thing. But why gingerly? I don't know, mate. I don't As if he's getting no. ginger. I know. I don't know why I'm asking. I'm looking at you. I know. I but know. You're going to impart some wisdom on me. The problem is you're thinking you're going to get an answer, and it's just not coming. Chiefly with reference to walking or dancing with small, elegant steps, elegantly, daintily, but not like to walk to be cautious or careful. Mm. Just because you expect it to be dangerous, unpleasant, doesn't see where it's coming from, though, I'm afraid. Mm, okay. I've learned nothing there. <laughs> Everybody's a school day in here. Yeah. And a, and, approved, and a proved school day. Yeah, it does come from just meaning delicately or elegantly. So it's maybe just been twisted a little bit over the over the years. Fabio Silva's getting ready, Ross McCausland. Gingerly makes his way to the so Fabio, dressing room straight away. More importantly, Fabio Silva off a side then which when I saw him at first I thought hmm, number 9 not so sure I thought he was more a 10 or off a side but he's done okay in the number 9 yeah, role he's been good yeah, yeah so. it was interesting that we had that Rangers fan last night saying cup final tomorrow if there was a cup final tomorrow 
Dessler's definitely the man to lead the line, yeah. not Fabio Silva. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah I think he's uh, he's a better option as a number nine. But Silva's a good player. I like Silva. I think uh, when he gets it deep, he's got good feet. He can go at players. He can go by players. He'll get you the odd goal. But if you're looking for a box player, and I know the Hughes saying that many chances that Dessler's missed, but what I like about it is he's there to miss the chances. The Morton run in serious danger now. They're 15 undefeated. Now they're two down to Cali Thistle. Yeah. See, At home. We do aim to educate. Chris Watson's just sent me a message to say because of Ginger Rogers dancing. Yeah. And Chris has ginger hair. So he would be an expert on this, perhaps. Of course. Fred you, Astaire you would and have Ginger to think. Rogers. That, so, uh, and that's that where the word or the term. <laughs> uh, and no, no. And he's ginger Chris hair, doesn't get him. Pretty confident, and Andy, the photo doctor, has done us a real turn here. He's done. He's. We've got a mock up of Grandpa Shug. There we are. <laughs> that's you straight into the Willy Wonka <laughs> experience. Yeah. That's not even. That, that's not a Photoshop. That's just you that, waking up this morning. We're a bit longer here. That's, <laughs> that's you. That's why you're looking very good there. How are you trying to say he's not looking good in the, the light? skin complexion looks better there. Is that oh, well, generated? He, did, uh, well, he doesn't drink red wine through that screen. Well, that's the problem. How <laughs> did the how did the uh, uh, Mandron to the header wide? By the way, for Saint Mirren should have scored. Silva's playing off the left for Rangers. Um, how did the red wine go down last night? We said Friday night it was the big mm. Clyde one staff night out for the fiftieth anniversary of this proud I institution. Had the, the perfect night out. Lovely three courser. Bottle of red, Callum Beatty was terrific, and a son in law came and picked me up. He, night out, he nights out very efficiently, this guy. Mm. We were on the show last night, we got there at half eight. I saw him walk out the room at 20 past 10. He, doesn't hang, <laughs> he does not hang around. That's the way do it. You see how much and red wine red in him. Uh, uh, please drink responsibly. Um, and not a penny spent. And yeah. just yeah. back out the well, not yeah. even not even a taxi home. <laughs> you can't ask for much better than that. If you pay That's for their weddings, Friday, if you pay for their weddings, they are beholden to you. <laughs> My favourite part of it was the his dessert. Right, you know he's fussy. <laughs> yeah. Right, you know he eats like a child <laughs> in right. some ways. Sticky toffee pudding and ice cream comes, and he turns his nose up at it. He says <sighs> to the waitress. Can I, can I just have ice, ice cream, cream please so she goes away and comes back with a bowl with four scoops of ice cream <laughs> in it would have been enough to fill the full table he took a couple of wee spoonfuls sent it on its way and she had seen her face when she came I, back I saw you saying that back I, I thought it was, said, said it was too much it was too much for him he said oh, he said I don't know four that. big scoops I must admit who needs four scoops yeah. and, and, and an event like that after they rejected the first sticky toffee he got another sticky toffee yeah. in front of him and that's because I ate it oh did you eat <laughs> that did he in. of course Aye, I he, wouldn't nice. have, he wouldn't have sent the red back that's for <laughs> no, sure he absolutely uh-huh. did not we've got one of these to tell you about where is it though goal flashes with M&D Green Pharmacy It's an equaliser for Kilmarnock It was Vassell was involved Watkins was there who got the final touch I think it might have been Marley Watkins With 35 minutes on the clock Dundee won, Kilmarnock won Well order is restored uh, You know it's now a fight for Dundee uh, I didn't get the impression that Kilmarnock would Spend too long a goal behind So another good watch there For Marley Watkins, equaliser Was it one of those was it this fixture earlier in the season? I think it was where Derek McInnes got a red card. For a uh, ball or something? Like he, come, yeah. he didn't think he was on the pitch. I'm not even sure if he definitely was, but the referee didn't like it. Remember, yeah. it was a ball up the line. Uh-huh. I can't recall that. Yeah. So it was a ball up the line, and he, from his technical area, like, kicked it or Did stopped it, really? it. He thought it had gone out of play. Hmm. He came um, on the pitch, didn't he? There's, a, there's a, a Celtic loan E that I wonder if we need to keep an eye on, because he seems to be doing good things down at Charlie Adams Fleetwood Boss and Lawal. Oh. He's, um, I think, like, you know, sort of pigeonholed as a central defender up here. He's gone to Fleetwood. He seems to be playing in midfield. He's chipping him with some goals. Yep. He's getting so he's a lot of good feedback. Week. So, oh, there's a big goal in the Premiership. I know it's not one of our featured games, but I'm giving it this. Goal flashes with M&D Green Pharmacy. St Johnston nil, Livingston won. Andrew Shinney. Everybody says Livy are gone anyway, but they might as well keep fighting away and maybe they're not maybe there is life left in there well the last two defeats this week alone would be enough to deflate anybody and then you have to go to McDermott Park where Craig Levine is getting a bit of a tune 
after their win at Pataudry so to go in the lead takes a lot of character but it's hanging on can they hang on now if they win that up to 19 points just four behind Ross County but Ross County they were game in hand yeah yeah. but they're, they're still clawing away but I don't think it'll be enough no I think I don't think they've got enough I don't even think they've got enough to hold on this afternoon I think St Johnson will come back into that game that's uh, the life of those clubs isn't it about how inconsistent you can be if St Johnson don't they, they were pretty good at the tawdry the I other know. night and <laughs> the, the front two caused a lot of problems I'm trying to get that to happen on a consistent basis consistency is a key word there Gordon because uh, you look at a lot of clubs and they just they, they've not got the consistency anyway, they need is it a big goal or is it too little too late in the context of today oh, sorry in the context of the season but anyway Andrew Shinney scored we'll give that time to find out which level of significance it carries between now and the end of the season mm. I want Gianni Infantino <laughs> to give Conor Barron a special mention at the next FIFA Congress because I'm sure he's seen quite a few good goals in his time but this one from Conor Barron quite special very very good apparently learned it um, in his loan spell at Brecon yep 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 is that uh, what they're saying like you liked him didn't you Park. oh more than liked him and everybody I speak to even after my time at Brecon who had him Wonderful player, but he, he won't be at Pataudry next year, will he? Because he's, he's contract contracts up, and it doesn't look like he's signing there. So, wonder where he'll go. You know, I don't think he'll stay in Scotland. I think he'll be off down south. Let's go. One quick reminder of the teaser, and we'll wrap up the answers. This is your two-minute warning. If you've not got your correct answers in, listen carefully. Can you name five current Scottish Premiership players who have represented their country at a major tournament and at the Olympics? Uh, Mary Lou, I think that says 1987 wants to throw in Alistair Johnson No Martin no. Boyle No Hatati wants to throw in Cameron Carter Vickers No Okay, <laughs> keep your guesses coming Nice to think there as I was writing <laughs> oh, we're Jack, sure. I see Jack's thinking he's gone Junior Hoylet oh. No uh, Has no. he played yet? Yeah, he's come on a couple has of he? times yeah. Come on midweek for Aberdeen the only clue I'll give you you've only got a couple of minutes left of the five answers there are only two nationalities covered here so mm, get right. th there we are Andy the photo doctor next up he's giving you the Oompa Loompa treatment Mark Wilson you'll be getting straight cast into the next <laughs> Willy Wonka I quite experience. like that I look a bit like there. the uh, Hugh Grant in the new Wonka film yeah, yeah. he plays at Oompa Loompa in that one you've seen that there. one yeah I like that yeah I with that Green Aye. hair. I've, I've seen worse photoshops being sent into this show about me. I don't. I, I've got to say, I, do, I don't like looking at photos. I don't take a good photo. Well, you think that's because your face. You think no, no, you're I stunning like, in real life. Yeah, but it just I doesn't come across in photos. I've got a lot of people come up to me and saying, "My goodness." Well, Is that what you I really thought, look like? I thought. I, I'm glad I said goodness. Yeah. You look stunning in real life, but you don't take a good <laughs> photo. I've, see, I've had a pound for every time that come out of people's mouth. Yeah. I was in Asda yesterday and a, a young female come up to me and said that. You're stunning looking elderly man, she said. What, what, what are you on about? Seriously? <laughs> the lie just starts and it just snowballs. <laughs> and it's like we just hear whatever his internal thought process is. Not realising he's broadcasting to yeah, many thousands must of people. You play that out in your mind before you spout that out. I mean, I can't, I've, you know. I've never at the stage, I can't tell the truth in anything. I know, I, we, we know that. We'll find out now that Aberdeen didn't travel by bus today. <laughs> <laughs> there was a VAR review for a claim. Uh, Commandment thought they were going to get a penalty after a short corner, but not given there. So it stays one all. Dundee one, Kilmarnock one, Rangers nil, Motherwell one. Theo Bear with the goal. <coughs> St Mirren nil, Aberdeen one. Thanks to Connor Barron's very early wonder strike. Hibs nil, Ross County nil, St Johnston nil, Livingstone one. This is when all Celtic fans who have dogs take them out for a walk, in the and stay away from this program, the telly, everything, and just hope that Mother will hang on until five o'clock. Yeah, there's a long way to go. I have to say, there's a but, name from the past, yeah. even though he's still very young. Karamoko Dembele, remember him scoring for Blackpool away at Shrewsbury just before half time. Well, well Mother will have got a name now. Get to half time. Get in at half time, one nil. Then first fifteen of the second half and then start looking at that clock Mark was talking about. Mm. Do you think there's a cause for concern though for come on? I know Rangers are playing well and everything's positive, but that's two games on the bounce, lost the first goal. 
One at home, uh, one away. Geez. You don't want to be making a habit of that. See, no. especially when the pressure starts building. Two is quite a small sample, though, isn't it? And one of them is, you know, you got to rugby park. You got to accept that there, are, you know, there are, there are other teams involved yeah. here. I know we sometimes think that it's all about the big teams' failings, but um, not an easy place to go. There's a big result. I was speaking to Stephen Mill walking in today, our colleague. He's a big Dunfermline fan Are He was winning? fearing the worst But they've taken the lead against Ayr Chris Hamilton On the corner a bit Dunfermline. minutes Yeah but all, all starting maybe at that For how a couple of weeks ago A couple of signings Made them much better Matty Todd back in the team Another breaking boy Back in the team He's doing really well for Tell them. me something right, I don't know what's <laughs> happened Nobody has got all Answers All Too answers difficult. on the teaser Too difficult There are only four There are only five Answers There are two nationalities represented You need four Australians And one Japanese international Which sport is it? <laughs> yeah I'm starting to wonder that We didn't tell you it was actually the badminton 1500 metres 800 So four Australian internationals And one Japanese international That's kind of what we're looking at here Okay We'll need to round it off I'll Tell you what I'll give you Since, it's, since the We've podium three. Since the podium's so bare I'll give you until during the halftime break today. I'll extend it. So it's five current Scottish Premiership players. They've represented their nation at a major tournament and the Olympics. And I'm giving you a big clue. Four of them are Australian. One of them is Japanese. But of course, there are a few Japanese players in the league and there are more than four Australians. So that's going to be the difficulty. We're just looking for a couple of Aussies. There are only three clubs represented within the five as well, if that's of any use whatsoever. No. Well, there's one club in particular who's got a real strong Australian connection, yeah, isn't there? Okay, don't, I don't mind that. We're, yeah. we're really desperate for people to get right, this right at name, this stage. Name one gives an initial. <laughs> oh um. my goodness. Andy, the photo doctor, has saved the best until last. Willy Wonka himself or he says or is it wonky willy <laughs> it's you gone oh, deal no. like we've never seen you before <laughs> that is outstanding that is really good i'll need to get that retweeted oh, like that. that is brilliant <laughs> oh. <laughs> right okay mark i do like uh, you're one well in that as well let's get a good photo of you and then just I, that, that's, doctor when me you're up. saying you've not think that you don't take a good photo i think I andy's, a one. I think oh, andy's a put a wee filter on that i think he's brought out the blue in your eyes Aye. I honestly, I your eyes better. look better in that picture than I'm they sure do in real trust life. Me, that'll be his profile picture mm. oh, later. In, his in real Instagram. life, they're a bit more bloodshot than that. That's a good tune. Ah, nice nose as well. I like the noise. Nice. He's smoothed out a wee bit. Reduced that. Yeah. Ah, he's done a great job for you there. I'll right. my profile now. Game of the day. I didn't think you expected Montrose Alawa, did you? But it's two all just before the break there. So that is a cracking game, a four goal thriller. Sean with Dillon. Sean Dillon Must still going 40. strong. <laughs> This is where I tell you that Sean Dillon's not that much older than you, Mark. No, uh, maybe young as a young. Oh, no, he is older. I'm pretty sure he's older. He can't, 40. He can't be. You're forty. No, yes, he's forty. Uh, he's a fat boy, Sean. Really half time, Ibrox, Sandra McLean. Rangers now, Motherwell won the half time score. Theo Bear's early strike might have this crowd a bit anxious going in at the break. There was a lot of positivity around Ibrox heading into the game, but the visitors provided an early shock. Jack Vale shrugging off John Suter on the right. He was just too strong for him. Then finding Theo Bear around the penalty spot. A first time finish in off the post to put Motherwell 1 0 up. Nine goals in his last 12 games for Theo Bear, what a record that is Liam Kelly then called into action instantly Nicholas Raskin's shot was straight at him though, he needed to move a bit more to keep out Mohamed Diamandi's effort from 25 yards, Rangers cranked up the pressure a wee bit after that, Red Van Yilmaz with a dipping effort, that one tipped away by Liam Kelly, then bodies were on the line as Motherwell had to defend the ball bouncing around the box, Ross McCausland, Cyril Dessers both having efforts but it was kept out Ross McCausland then forced off injured after being caught on the follow through by Dan Kelly Casey, the Rangers players not happy about the challenge no free kick was given, McCausland went straight down the tunnel, Fabio Silva came on and forced a Liam Kelly save with a volley not long after taking to the field, just before that Blair Spittle had one blocked at the other end before testing Jack Butland with the rebound but if Rangers are to get three points today they're going to need to come from behind for the second game running, the half time score at Ibrox is Rangers nil, Motherwell one Half time Easter Road, Fraser Wishart yeah, it won't be too long that this uh, half-time report. Gordon Hibernian nil, Ross County nil. Really poor 45 minutes, to be honest. Played at the pace of a practice game. One chance at either end. Little to do for either keeper. Hibs most of the ball. No tempo to the game. And allowing County to get behind the ball. Just slow start to the game. 
County said cautious. Hibs with lots of the ball, but creating nothing until the 17th minute. The first effort at goal by either side. A low my leader shot was straight at George Wickens. The keeper should have saved it comfortably, but he spilled the ball. But he got up quickly to make amends and block the rebound from Amy Marcondes. But Hibs were too slow in a build-up. County dropping off, nine behind the ball, hitting on the break on occasion. But David Marshall, nothing to do as we passed 20 minute marks. And Hibs fans, understandably quiet, needing something to spark the game into life. And the spark nearly came at the other end. We County almost equalised in 25 minutes. A poor pass in midfield by Marcondes was picked up by Latore 30 yards from goal. He drove forward, wasn't challenged, so he decided just to shoot from 20 yards. Struck it well, and it was a good save to his right, pushed away by Marshall. But that was it, chance-wise, nothing else to report. Hopefully we'll see better in the second half, but it couldn't be any worse, to be honest. County will be pretty happy. They've been comfortable at the back. Hibs need to come out at the start of the second half. All guns blazing. Or well, the crowd have been really patient so far, and behind their team, they might turn against them. Half-time... Easter Road, Hibernian nil, Ross County nil. OK, where is the next half-time whistle to go? I think it was at the Smyza Stadium, David Friel. Ooh, technology sounds a bit ropey there. We'll try and get David to clear that up for us. Let's go to Dave Galloway if it is half-time in that one. No, not yet, actually. Dave Galloway is still a little bit behind, I think. A bit of a, a longer... End to the half, Dundee against Kilmarnock. David Friel, can you hear us now? Yeah, half time gone St Mirren now, Aberdeen won. I tell you what, Gianni Infantino has picked a cracking game to take in. Aberdeen led it, lead at the break, but this has been non stop entertainment. If you've a president in his seat early, he's next to Ian Maxwell, Mike Moraney from the SFA, and just as well he was early because Connor Barn fired Aberdeen ahead after just 60 seconds. What a goal it was. Duke created it, storm and run down the right, fired in across. It was cleared out to Barn, probably 30 yards out, took a touch right into the top corner with his shot what a stunner it was Aberdeen fans went crazy really could tell that Aberdeen got a lift from it on the pitch or competing far better Duke was having a really good game but St Mern did set on certainly with the best the last 25 minutes of the half they probably feel they should have equalised by now Greg Kilty the header save Kill Bruce then tipped a volley onto the bar from Lewis Jameson Michael Mandron sorry Michael Mandron had an even better chance when he broke free in the, the box Ah, we've lost him. We got the gist of it. Let's see if we can go to Dens Park. Yes, we can, Dave Galloway. Half time, Dundee won, Kilmarnock won. There was no sign of a Dundee hangover from their hammering by Celtic on Wednesday night as they made an impressive start. Josh Mulligan's deflected drive from the edge of the box was turned around the post by Will Dennis, and they took the leads deservedly, deservedly so after 11 minutes. A good run down the left by Scott Tiffany. He cut inside in his drive, hit the post, then Dennis, and in for an OG. Kilmarnock were posing very little threat at this stage against their dominant host Danny Armstrong's free kick from the touchline troubled John McCracken but the danger was cleared however the visitors turned the game on its head by equalising after 35 minutes Armstrong's cross was headed back across goal by Joe Wright and Marley Watkins forced the ball in from point blank range that saw them really pick things up and Danny Armstrong's free kick was turned over by John McCracken and from the resulting corner they had a possible penalty turned down following a VAR review Dundee certainly started this one the stronger but Kilmarnock definitely finished it the stronger half time it's all to play for Dundee 1 Kilmarnock 1 that's us it's also half time St Johnson nil, Livingston 1 Andrew Shinney with the goal there but we'll do a full round up of the half time scores and I'll give you the answers and the winners to that first half teaser next the fastest goals, the experts' opinions. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Halftime scores from the Scottish Premiership: Dundee One, Kilmarnock One, Hibs Nil, Ross County Nil, Rangers Nil, Motherwell One, St Johnston Nil, Livingston One, and St Mirren Nil, Aberdeen One. In the Championship: Airdrie Nil, Queens Park One, Dunfermline Two, Air United Nil, Morton Nil, Inverness Two, Partick Thistle One. Dundee United nil in League One Edinburgh City nil Cove Rangers one Falkirk nil Annan nil Kelty Hearts nil Hamilton Ackies three Montrose two Alloa two and Queen of the South one Stirling Albion one in League Two Bonnie Rig Rose nil Stenhouse Muir nil Clyde nil Elgin City one Dumbarton nil Peterhead nil Stranraer nil Forfar nil and Spartans one East Fife one finally the English Premier League it 
is Brentford nil, Chelsea one, Everton nil, West Ham nil, Fulham two, Brighton nil, Newcastle two, Wolves nil, Forest nil, Liverpool nil, and Spurs nil, Crystal Palace nil. Let me give you the answers because we gave you a little bit extra time this afternoon. It was proving very difficult, but let's find out if we got anywhere on this. The first half teaser with the Scottish Sun.co.uk slash football for the best football news and opinion online. The five current Scottish Premiership players who have represented their country at a major tournament and at the Olympics are Daisen Maeda from Celtic who played for Japan at the World Cup in 2022 and in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Cammy Devlin of Hearts, Australia in the World Cup in 2022 and also the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Kai Rolls, Hearts, Australia at the World Cup and the Tokyo Olympics Keanu Bacchus St Mirren Australia World Cup 2022 2020 Olympics and finally Nathaniel Atkinson Hearts for Australia at the World Cup in 2022 and at the 2020 Olympics I think only one person got it right so the third place space on the podium is empty so is the second place but the top spot's been taken by Derek FM it took him a few guesses a few attempts but he got there in the end well done to Derek We'll get the second halves next. I wear a few different hats as a CFO. You know, sometimes it's referred to as chief fixing officer. (laughs) Wherever there's a fire in the business, um, you know, I'm often there first. Whatever hats CFOs like Imran need to wear, Sage's tools and insights can make sure they fit. Sage, helping business flow. Looking to get car or van insurance double quick? Go, go, go! To mustard.co.uk With top insurance providers, a five-minute pit stop with us could get you out in front in the race to savings. Car or van, work or play. Compare insurance with mustard.co.uk. T's and C's apply. Authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. The Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast. With Lucas Volvo. Book a test drive for the Volvo EX30 today. Head online for details. Number one for football in Glasgow and the West. 0141 951 1025. Clyde One Super Scoreboard. There's been a change at the break at Ibrooks. It is Tom Lawrence on and Nicholas Raskin off. I saw Rangers fans on social media calling for that change. Two reasons combining. I think Tom Lawrence has obviously been very good recently. And Nicholas Raskin, Gordon, a lot of high hopes, but after the injury, he's maybe one of the ones that hasn't quite got going yet. Yeah, he's certainly fighting for a starting place. He got an opportunity today. Um, Lawrence has been in good form, I've got to say. Got a good good goal against Kilmarnock. Terrific, well worked. Uh, it was all about quick thinking, not just from him, but from the manager on the touchline as well. Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes With M&D Green Pharmacy Get the help you need to quit With the Smoking Cessation Programme Just like that The second halves are underway St Mirren have made a change as well Jameson off Olusanya With a new contract this week Comes on Just kicking off there Just kicking off at Ibrooks. A big 45 minutes ahead Just down the road Between Rangers and Muller Will you? Massive uh, As I say Every Celtic fan who has a dog is now in a park near them uh, to keep away and just hope that they finally get someone to tap them on the shoulder and say, Mother will beat Rangers. Don't take his advice. Please stay listening between now and six o'clock just but to keep the, the figures up. What, yeah. what a break it would be uh, for Brendan Rodgers and uh, Celtic if Rangers were to drop anything, you know, because Celtic last weekend at Motherwell taking a pounding booed off at half time, 90 minutes gone, it's still 1 1. Uh, they, they, they then have the Adam Ida and uh, Louis Palmer goals and then they follow that up with seven against Dundee so this would be the icing on the cake For Motherwell, Gordon you wonder if the oh, Rangers have the ball in the net but the flag goes up that doesn't mean it definitely will be ruled out they'll have a look maybe we do have a Rangers equaliser um, whilst we wait on that Gordon the the challenge for Motherwell, I suppose, is that balance between your best chance of getting something might be to score again mm. rather than rather than to 
hang on like I say it's not like you can flip a switch and decide to do one or the other but it is early to score they'll know that there's going to be some sort of backlash at some point surely in the second half oh they'll be expecting a reaction I'm sure that the Mullenwo manager would have been saying that to his players look he'll be in there red in the right act they'll change one or two things they're going to get at you of course they're. they'll have the most of the possession especially at Ibrox and that home crowd but if Motherwell can dig in for an extra mm, 15 well, we minutes, see because this obviously check yeah, is it still there going was on? A, a short corner. It was headed back towards the Motherwell goal by a defender. Souter then had a, a headed effort saved. Desser smashed it over the line. So I guess the question mark. Yeah, check complete. No goal for Rangers. So I'll tell you who's come out flying. The Ackies. Regan Tumulty makes it Kelty nil. Ackies four with just 50 minutes on the clock. 16 points between Falkirk and the Aki too so, many isn't yeah, it it's far too many. many you would have to think and if it's not then we're in for one of the best comebacks of all time in a league title race but it does look like the Bairns will gain promotion right let's give some time on this all week again I'm just like how can we come up with a way to make sure Gordon DL does not get the answer to the second half teaser I think he's going to get this one I'll put it out there already oh don't say that And now a word from our podcast sponsor, Lookers Motor Group. They've got Jaguar, Land Rover and Volvo showrooms across Glasgow and the West, so you can find the new or used approved car that's right for you. The Land Rover showrooms can be found in Motherwell, Darnley and the north of Glasgow with their Jaguar and Volvo showroom found in Hillington. And right now at lookers.co.uk, you can browse and shop 24-7, value your part exchange, order and take delivery from the comfort of your own home. Every approved used Jaguar, Land Rover or Volvo comes with a minimum of 12 months warranty, roadside assistance, MOT test warranty, an independent mileage and service history check, software updates and lots more. Check out lookers.co.uk to get your new or used approved Land Rover, Jaguar or Volvo today. Now back to the podcast. The second half teaser. With the scottishsun.co.uk slash football. For the best football news and opinion online. I have played alongside Brian Graham and Joe Aribo. I have been managed by Peter Houston and Mark Hughes. I have been in the PFA Team of the Year twice. The only major honours that came my way were won in Scotland. Who am I? Played alongside Brian Graham and Joe Aribo. Managed by Peter Houston and Mark Hughes. In the PFA Team of the Year twice. And the only major honours I have won came in Scotland. Who am I? At Clyde SSB, and Gordon Deal's got it already. The format must change, right? This is it. This is a this is a line in the sand. I don't know how we do it, but the format of the question oh. gets changed from this moment on. I am sick of this. He has genuinely got the answer already. I, that was easy. Very annoying. It is a bit easier that today, but easy. still, how do you? It's the speed. That was easy Because I wrote down And I just yeah. Gave the jigsaw Nah That's it you, uh, Making changes next week Oh you can make as many changes you want Nah I'm, just I'm, something I'm, completely different I'm going to start throwing in like um, You're going to have to identify them by Shoe size or something Right okay um, But that I think that Look I can't believe you didn't get that Anyway For you mere mortals out there Who are not as quick as Gordon DL It's at Clyde SSB And it's a race See if you can get the answer in Who am I is the question You need to provide The Answer, we did say one of the games of the day Down the leagues is Montrose Alloa, it's now 3-2 to Montrose Edinburgh City nil, Cove Rangers 2 Mitch Meganson, good goal scorer over the years He's got a goal in that one As well, so just a quick Reminder, I know that's been a busy start To the second half So it's still Rangers nil, Motherwell 1, that Theo Bear Early goal, Rangers made a change at the break there Taking off Nicholas Raskin, bringing on Tom Lawrence, they had been forced into A change earlier uh, Ross McCausland off injured Fabio Silva on Hibs nil, Ross County nil, Dundee 1, Kilmarnock 1 St Mirren nil, Aberdeen 1 A stunner from Conor Barron with just 60 seconds on the clock And St Johnston nil, Livy 1 Thanks to Andrew Shinney Well it's not often you get a second half where All games in the, the Premiership are on an eighth edge And you, you wonder what will happen next And it, it, It's sensational stuff You know, no one i Include the two Gordons in this studio. No one could have foreseen Motherwell a goal up into the second half at Ibrooks, but they are. And Aberdeen, hopeless 
for weeks I go up against a decent St Mirren team and Dundee Kilmarnock the old pals act Tony Doherty Derek McInnes tied Livy a goal up who could have foreseen that as well against us St Johnson side who won at Pataudry in midweek but poor old Fraser is stuck with the doozy yeah so far so far Hibs nil Ross County nil we'll see if Fraser Wishart can get anything in the second half um, what a game in the what used to be known as the juniors did you notice that the big one today who, oh, who, who was who? playing Lock and Lick Cumnock oh that's the big some, one that's some fixture 4-0 finish talking like oh. Surely they'll all take it really well Surely yeah. the Cumnock fans will all be understanding Say well the, done chaps Good crowd to that as well That is the big one down there isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like oh, yeah I know yeah. there are a few but um, Mounted police used to be the order oh, of the day there East Ayrshire is black and gold Says the Auckland Lake Twitter account <laughs> oh. Four zip Who the bankies playing here usually keep an eye on things? Uh, they must be away because the daughter's not there With son and husband Mark yeah. Wilson, you usually spy on the manager. I do. I didn't finish see him that. This morning, lost. I was I was busy. Darvel won. Clay Bank nil. Oh, oh yeah. Clay to pull the goal back. They really need a win today, Clay. After that six-one win last Saturday, it's Dennis Muir. Oh, Motherwell hit the bar. It's that oh. Blair Spittle just can do. I was going to say he can do no wrong, but he has done wrong. He's hit the bar when it really should have gone in. Um, it was actually a first. It was a, a cross in a first-time effort. He's technique. Has been, I mean, I don't know it's always been good, but we're really seeing it at top level at the moment, aren't we? You look in the space mm. of three days, that goal against Celtic with the right foot, the finish against Livy with the left, his technique's been brilliant. What is he, is he an actual right footer? Yeah. Uh, uh, but I, I thought the one against Livy was brilliant, I've got to say. He's hit that absolutely spectacular. He's had in some season, he really has. He's been Motherwell's best player uh, throughout the season and. Uh, he's so important to them, and that's the one thing you can guarantee. He can get you a goal out of nothing because he's got a great ability. Mm, it's the crossbar, though, so Motherwell coming close to doubling their lead at Ibrox. As Hugh said, Clyde won, Elgin won after being oh. bottom last week, going to top side Stenhouse Muir and winning 6 1. 1 0 yeah. yeah. behind, were they as well? Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. I'm just thinking there'll be no one going away from Ibrox early at this rate. Yeah, They'll, they'll, they'll need to hang on and see what they can do. Yeah, mm. I saw that Philippe Clement calling for everyone to stay. It's been a real, it's a touchy subject, that one on social media. I see everyone arguing about it because I get both. I don't really leave games early. I don't like it. Uh-huh. And I, I, you know, I understand the logic of wanting everyone to stay. But some people just feel like, you know, you can't make them. It's just one of those things. This guy leaves at about 60 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and but there's enough why? for me. What's your reasoning behind leaving early uh, for games? I like to I like to get away before the traffic. Oh, 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 could be a penalty at Ibrox. A VAR check. Silva goes down in the box. Big appeals from fans. And they're going to have a look, so... You mm. never know. No. Who's the referee at Ibrox today? Alan Muir. Alan Muir. Well, they were denied a penalty mid-week Rangers when it yeah. should have been a blatant penalty when Mayo handball uh, got one against them when, in my opinion, it wasn't a penalty. Um, so let's see where this one goes. This could be crucial, you know, especially how early it is into the second half. That's where you want a reaction from your side right away. They can get it level, then Motherwell backs against the wall. Yeah. And just after Motherwell have hit the bar. Yeah. Um, there's a booking for an on-goal and off-the-ball incident. I think a Donald's had a sort of lash out or something at Dujon Sterling. Um, that check's still ongoing. You sometimes feel like the longer they look, the more that something will be found, but you never know. Um, We've seen in the past week as well, referees going to the screen. Uh, you know, it was a for Park. Well, the column went there yeah. to the screen. St- and rightly so, by the way. <laughs> I could not wow. believe he was called over to have a look. And that's that's what you know. We never highlight as well. Who is in that booth saying, "Gavin you, Duncan, you, you, you better you have a an look answer. at this. You better have a look at this." And Come then on. though, and then midweek when Kevin Clancy goes and yeah. checks the monitor at the yeah. Edinburgh Derby, most people felt he probably got that one wrong and should have overturned his decision. So. Nah. There we go. The fun and games. Clyde to Elgin Ooh. one. Wow. Jordan Allen with the All goal right. there. This is a long check, is it not? Yeah, it is taking a long, long time, of course. And this is the frustration of the lack of communication because they need to check attacking phases of play. They might think it is a penalty, but then they have to go back and check what's happened in the lead-up and all that sort of stuff. So, And they can take quite some time. So we're trying to get that middle 
ground, mm. isn't it? Because my, my sort of gut on that ding wall one the other night is that if they just actually looked at everything a bit longer, they would have to give that. You oh. would have to. You, but whether they thought, oh, oh, he's going to the screen, Alan Muir, so chances are well, Rangers a... penalty coming. Penalty yeah. kick. Yeah, without doubt. Yeah, and that man Tavernier. So that would be 122 goals for Tavernier. Kelly might just save it. Don't don't rule out the goalkeeper. Mm, saved one at Celtic Park earlier exactly. this season, didn't he? But James Tavernier's been in good form yeah, recently. He's 20 been. goals this season. We saw the other night free kicks, penalties, open play. When Rangers need them, mm. he tends to step up. It's going he's down the middle, this one. He right, puts it down the middle. Do you think so? Yeah. He's, he's been some signing for Rangers, got it. <sighs> And and I remember sitting in this programme not that long ago and Rangers fans coming on and absolutely criticising him. He's not a leader, he's not a captain. He's been absolutely brilliant for them, you've got to say. Well, he has a go-to man to go to. If there's any negative result for Rangers, the fans just automatically blame Tavernier for some reason. Yeah, goals, penalty given, to... penalty Rangers. This could be a big moment in the title race as James Tavernier is going to step up. Alan Muir goes to the monitor points to the spot I think one of those that will divide opinion the decision James Tavernier will have the chance to pull Rangers level I think Stephen O'Donnell and Dan Casey are both in there Silva goes down mm. we'll argue about it later I'm sure yeah, I need to get a real good look at that um. right let's see then what happens from the spot it's going to be James Tavernier up against Liam Kelly if Rangers do pull level Ibrox will erupt and they will have quite a long time they'll have over 30 minutes to get the winner that they are looking for so this could be will be a big moment either way in the title race you have to imagine nothing's been done quickly at Ibrox today it has to be said we've got another goal elsewhere that I'm going to tell you about but let's just hang fire on Ibrox so I can give you the news as soon as we Get it, top steps James Tavernier, you know the rest. With M and D Green Pharmacy. No saving that right into the top corner. Nearly a perfect penalty from James Tavernier. Just when Rangers needed him, they were trailing again, hadn't quite got going, but they're level from the penalty spot. Rangers won Motherwell won and Goal Flashes with M and D Green Pharmacy. Hibs have taken the lead Fraser Wishart's finally got a goal It's Hibs 1, Ross County 0 And it's Maizian Maiolida Some of Hibs January recruits Have been looking pretty good in recent weeks 59 minutes gone Hibs 1, Ross County 0 But how big is that James Tavernier goal at Ibrox? Well half an hour to go At least at Ibrox And if you're a betting man Then your money is all on Rangers And uh, Motherwell will now face an, a 30 minute long onslaught and uh, do they have it do they have the wherewithal to withstand that onslaught possibly not it's incredible small margins in football Motherwell will hit the bar if they go 2-0 up the confidence they get from that would have been unreal Rangers go right up the park get a penalty kick and all of a sudden the pressure will be right on that Motherwell back five now. Yeah, Andrew McLean reckons that puts him on 130 career goals, which is joint with Graham Alexander as the highest scoring British defender of all time. Oh, really? Double ch- there is a list that's doing the rounds, and I assume it's it's accurate. I saw, I did see that during the week. Um, but there we go. It's quite an accolade, it'll, isn't it? Yeah, he'll surpass that this season because he, he certainly won't stop here. It's just how, how somebody how signs Graham Alexander. <laughs> how recent he's him, yeah. take a few penalties. He'll have to wear his all Saints jumper when he's playing oh, though. He's never absolutely. got off. But um, uh, you just wonder where he's going to stop, James Tavernier. You know, he'll continue at Rangers. You can't see him leaving Rangers anytime soon. How old is he? 30? Is he? He's 32. Oh, still a bit of, bit of mileage Takes in care those of doesn't, he, doesn't he miss any never games? Misses a game. I know. Incredible, isn't it? That uh, job is retired. A year. Yeah, but he was a player. Falkirk <laughs> one and a nil. Did I tell you that that procession to the League One title looks like it will continue? We're only unbeaten team in the country, Falkirk, oh. as the Aggies go five up. Yeah, I know because we put it in the beat the pundit at least once a week. So we did. We we checked it off this week as well. They are still the only unbeaten team. Uh, Kelty nil. Aggies five. As Hugh says, it's an Akim Rose hat trick. Uh, but that Rangers goal, that's the one that's been heard loudest in this part of the world. And the Hibs goal, though, could be a big one as well. Well, at least it broke the monotony, because if <laughs> if uh, Fraser can say that 
Nothing to report At least he has now Something to report Takes him into top six yeah. It remains that way Yep um, that's, That'd be a good result For Hibs I've got to say I fancied them today At home Middle to front I think he's tweaked the formation He's put an extra man In the middle of the park I think it's working for him But he, I'm with Fraser He was talking about A couple of centre halves He needs a bit of quality In the defence for me Well he's got the money Coming to him From Bill Foley uh, At Bournemouth owner uh, I know a lot that is earmarked for train grounds and the uh, upgrade of the stadium but some of it will have to find its way to Nick Montgomery Is the training ground not quite new? Gordon you've been there mm. haven't you? Looks alright yeah. I was there a couple yes, of months ago It's nice. no, quite nice mm. My untrained eye so. Never been Never been to that one R- Reminders of the teaser again Hugh see if anyone's caught up with Gordon D. Elliott Motherwell going for a, a quite an attacking change actually Sam Nicholson who got his first goal at Livy during the week has come on for Davor so a bit more of an attacking minded no real defensive players in that midfield now for Motherwell so we'll see how that fares with it the scores level at one all and about 30 minutes to go Palmerston Pep's gone 2-1 up Queen of the South 2 Sterling Albion 1 right Hugh remind us I have played alongside Brian Graham and Joe Aribo I have been managed by Peter Houston and Mark Hughes I have been in the PFA team of the year twice. The only major honours I won were in Scotland. Who am I? Okay. Alan Lappin thinks it might be Effie Ambrose. No. Okay. And Divers thinks Danny Kadamatri. Oh, no. Okay, right. Keep your guesses coming at Clyde SSB. If you want to see the question written down, sometimes that's easier than listening to Hugh Evans. I, I don't mean easier as in more enjoyable, of course. <laughs> I just mean easier. To take it all in. Oh, well, speaking of which, are you aware you have become a TikTok talking point? If I can no. coin such a phrase. No? No. You do, do know what TikTok is? It's uh, not the noise that I, your I, clock makes. I, I, I have, heard, I have heard of it. <laughs> so basically, there is a very popular Twitter, uh, TikTok account for a driving school oh. in Lanarkshire, okay? Um, people will be familiar with the work It's NL School of Motoring right. Now this guy's gone viral Because he quite often has Students, driving students Who swear a lot yeah. And say very funny things And he's filming them while they're doing the driving lessons They go viral on TikTok um, And you get the picture Well this week you got a mention Wow! So I'm actually going to play this clip From the NL School of Motoring TikTok they should have like a Scottish person yeah, doing the sat nav, shouldn't they? It would be a good voice to have on the sat nav. I don't know, who would you say? Hugh Evans, I think. Oh no, I hate him, he's so annoying, man. He <laughs> like cold, I, think. I think he's got a nice, soothing voice. Take the next right onto Old Boar Road, then turn left onto Forest Street. Imagine that was Hugh Evans, you would understand where you were needing to go. Do you don't like Hugh Evans, no? It seems like you just got a permanent cold. <laughs> uh, I think Hugh Evans would be a good audio booker. Oh, he's saying to sleep all right, but it's not. Yeah, I think that's the purpose of it, isn't it? Uh, uh, right, it's not about hearing the story. Aye, but I think it would be, it'd be a, 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 nice, a nice voice to listen to, telling you a story. Him and maybe like Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman and Hugh Evans? Aye. They're the two people. <laughs> What do you think in your career? Oh, me and me and Morgan Freeman, the <laughs> shug, <laughs> the shug shank redemption. Yes, oh, I like it. Oh, about you. What That's do you think? Brilliant. I mean, you, I know you don't drive, but you've sat in your fair share of cars. Do, yeah. do, you, do you think you could do the sat nav? Have you got the right cadence? You got the right tone? Do you think I've got some? I've got some lines for oh, you if well. you want it. You could give Come it a on. go. Yeah, I should, completely. I don't know if they're made up. But to be fair, I think she's got you right. Continue down Glasgow Road for two hundred yards, and take the next right. Into Home Park Yeah that's accurate Oh it's more than 200 yards But anyway Take the third exit At the roundabout Onto Broomlone Road <laughs> And continue For 400 yards I'd rather get lost so we're, we're going <laughs> to Ibrox and Celtic Park here I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking In a quarter of a mile Keep left Onto Janefield Street <clears throat> Turn right Onto the A398 Then turn right Into Keevan Road Perform a U-turn at the next possible opportunity. <laughs> See, well, Battery low. <laughs> you have arrived 
at your destination. That's not bad. I think you need, I think you could, with a bit of practice, I think you've Aye. got a future. Yeah. I think people would like that, enjoy that. I think that could work. Apparently, the top five sat nav voices, according to whichever article this is, is number five, Roger Moore. Oh. Four, Darth Vader. <laughs> What? Three Kit from Knight Rider. Oh, oh I can understand that. Two Homer Simpson and one Brian Blessed. I'd have you well before Brian oh, Blessed. Yeah, yeah. He's a Brian blower. Blessed. Who I is can, that? He played uh, Friar Tuck in Robin Hood, didn't he? I can just imagine. That's a thieves. I think that's a good shout. Hugh Keevans, the sat nav. What do we think? Gordon's alive. Can we can we get <laughs> on board with that? Um, what great. you did miss was one of these. Goal flashes. With M and D Green Pharmacy. Goal done. D. It was a penalty. Tiffany was dragged back. Robbie D's got a red card. The Kelly player surrounded the ref. V A R checked it. Sorry, Lewis Mayo, um, who got sent off. It stood. McCowan took the penalty and scored. Dundee two, Kilmarnock on one, and the big goal in the championship. Partick Thistle have been pegged back It's Partick Thistle 1, Dundee United 1 That man Louis Moult with the goal mm. well, Advantage Dundee Yeah, fair play to all concerned at Dens Because they took the mother and father of a going over at Celtic Park Seven goals, you don't normally get that in the Premiership 7-1 battering And they've come back today Showed a lot of character Tiffany, it sounds like he's at the heart of everything. He scored a couple of goals last week, um, but am I right to say he wasn't playing mid No, no. Yeah, yeah, back in the team, causing havoc. And well done, Dundee, coming for a goal behind him. Still a bit of time for Kamarnock. They've got options on the bench that they can bring on and get them back into the game. They've got a good squad, Kamarnock, very strong. So I wouldn't count my chickens yet. Mm. Uh, well, of course, come on, look down to 10 men, though. I would count them now. I've started counting them, yes. Um, I would I imagine Dundee. I, I fancied Dundee for, at 3 o'clock. I did say you that. You counting them two seconds ago. No, I always think that Kamana can uh, carry a danger. They've got players that can score goals. Uh, but Dundee, 11 v 10, at home, 2 1 in front. It's harder, oh, though, no. remember. It's harder. I've just checked yeah. my email inbox and I've not had one single offer. From Garmin, Google Maps, Tom Tom, if that's still a thing, not one offer yet for that's Hugh Keevans to be the voice yeah. of Satnav. I would enjoy that. You, you direct by the well, end of the get, show. I do get that every Saturday night. You do direct me <laughs> straight to your front door when I'm dropping you off. I'll, I'll I'll do it in a nice voice tonight for you. What about that girl saying that I sound as if we got a cold? <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> you sound like you're holding your nose. Nasal uh, congestion is my gimmick. Have you seen? Are you familiar with the work of that TikTok account, NL School of Motoring? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, a lot of very interesting comments made <laughs> on the driving lessons. Amazing. Amazing. Well, listen, my boys, my boys taking lessons with them. That same company? That same company, yeah. very same man. What yeah. one's he? No. Is he swear? <laughs> so your one son is, is part of that driving strimmer. school? Aye. Aye. <laughs> is he the boy that's looking for the strip? <laughs> Yeah, I know. So when he says, "There's my fat uncle," is he talking He's about talking Gordon? About uncle Gordon. <laughs> He's talking about Uncle Gordon walking down the street. Hey, you. Aye, 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 I'd be so. quite starstruck by that. Oh, he's, uh, he's amazing. So he's had two lessons so far, going along great. Hmm. Uh, he's and has he recorded your boy? No, no, he's not had the camera. It must be the only. Uh, it must be only ones with a big, um, big person. The big, the sort of. Uh, what's the word? The controversial personalities that get. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mark I think Wilson's he's a bit son quiet. Would be too respectable. A bit quiet. He concentrates he? on the road. Yeah, ah. rather than strimmers that are <laughs> been stolen, <laughs> stolen, for his and not returned. That is amazing. Some of the videos on there. Oh, what a laugh! You get TikTok you on, the, on the Nokia, no? No, no. I laugh the kids. Should have seen him last night. So someone in the news team, um, a female member of the news team, had a sort of fancy hair up do for the, the big Clyde One mm. party last night, and she asked Hugh to take a picture of the back of her head. Uh, to, so that she could analyse the hairstyle yeah. from behind and handed handed him her phone. Mm. You'd think he'd just been handled a bomb. You should have seen <laughs> the way he was. She couldn't even hold it properly. Just <laughs> such a weird experience to witness. And then you've got your, uh, no, no, Zoom in. A, a nightmare it was. It's quite <laughs> self explanatory. You pressed the button. I did enjoy the part last night where Callum Beatty came on. It was fantastic. And I just looked down. 
And you were at the back of the room with us to start with. Yeah. You, you found yourself oh, right, his way right forward. in front right of the stage. stage. And you could just see your wee head rocking side to side, <laughs> having the time of your life. Not a clue what he was singing, though. No, 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 but he, he shouted out Shug at one point. Well, that was he shouted out, Shug, can you sing? And I think he was looking for Shug to join in, and I looked in Hugh's face, was just blank, <laughs> just staring back, not even a smile. That put. He should have got that, you on stage alongside him. That would have been. That would have made the night. I, I sat beside a man at Cash for Kids two years ago and he paid £7,000 to shake his hand I was for, Callum, for Callum Beatty to come over to the table and, and shake yeah. his hand it started off like to perform privately or something didn't yeah. it and then Alison it's just for charity it's a good cause Dumbarton won Peter Hednell Michael Ruth with the goal Miofsky had a low free kick saved a bit of a weak effort from him um, Aberdeen <coughs> could be doing with him finding his scoring touch again doubling that advantage I'm sure Stephen Robinson will be G'ing his players up. He tends to be quite animated on that touch line. Do you want me to take a photograph of the back of your head, Dazzle? Oh, no, I don't. Nope. I, I don't uh, even let's see I... your penalty spot. No, <laughs> have I'm, you got I'm, the powder on that yet? I'm waiting on the guy sending that in. If he's listening, he better get the stuff. Can we do it live on the show? Can we do if it? he sends it in, but, but I, I, need, I need silver. I don't, I'm kind of go grey because that's no grey. That's not grey. That's a, that's a, that's a sort a natural of natural silver. A natural silver. Um, you know, so sometimes if I'm looking back through like the thousands of pictures on my phone to find something, and I, you can honestly, I've got you can spot the exact moment that he decided to stop <laughs> dying his hair. It's unbelievable. I did not dye my hair. At the eight, look, <laughs> like, stop, stop. No, there is this one there. right because there's a there's a picture of the four of us. Funnily enough, we're it's going to the we're going to the die. PFA awards or something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we're, at, and we're in the office. Right. We're going to the PFA awards. We're all standing suited and booted And you've got dark hair So it's May right It's the end of the season It's the last week of the season And then all I have to do Is scroll down Just like a couple of weeks later And then there's pictures of you With the, like, the complete silver <laughs> fall I was Look. 42 that Dave. time <laughs> Hugh I've got, I've, got, I've got magic pills for you Oh, oh, no, no, got, he's got them. He's don't, you, them. don't you worry about that. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm talking I'm about, I am talking about <laughs> you go into a well known chemist. Uh-huh. And well, he's got a guy that gets him his <laughs> yeah. pills, pills that will make your hair grow. Make your hair grow? Yes. Your hair. Oh, right, your okay. hair grow. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> right? He's not interested in it's your hair. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Just for oh. the avoidance of doubt. 14 quid As a long pop. as I don't get them mixed up with my other pills. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a goal at Ibrox. Goal flashes with M&D Green Pharmacy. And it's a goal for Motherwell. It's Dan Casey, a header at the back post, and Motherwell take the lead for the second time at Ibrox. Many people would have thought when Rangers got level, they would be the ones to kick on. Dan Casey has other ideas. Rangers 1, Motherwell 2. Well, we can safely say if that's the result, and they've got 15 minutes left at Ibrox, that's the result of the season so far. If, if it if the scoreline turns into a result that is astonishing when Rangers equalise from the penalty spot <laughs> after a VAR check you really think the roof will cave in and mother will now astonishing scoreline what did it say about pressure though Hugh? I mean every home game every away game from now to the end of the season for both Rangers and Celtic takes on a different form through what is earlier on in the season you know where these games are just easy run of the mill nothing comes easy now Rangers may go on and get something they may equalise they may go on and, and, and get a winner but very rarely you're going to get an easy game um, and I know that sounds cheap coming off the back of 7 and 5 last week for Rangers but from now on big pressure well, there's a long way to go and a lot can change but if that is costly the Rangers fans who have been tweeting to say that Dan Casey should have been sent off in the first half oh, will have something yeah. to say on the open line I suspect uh, but Philippe Clement no hanging about he's gone straight Stop. for the change Dessers off roof on scorer of many many important goals for Rangers we just don't see him that often but sure Kettlewell's responded wow Andy Halliday on oh, oh, Shane oh, that's, oh, right, okay. If Halliday scores an own goal <laughs> I will never <laughs> speak to him again I promise <laughs> He'll get Rangers man in the match He will be <laughs> banned from this show forever more But he's come oh, on for Shane Blaney 
But I say, Stuart Kelwell's done okay uh, against Rangers and Celtic so far this season. Close, yeah, the yeah. games have even lost. Think it. of the game at, at Celtic Park where there was that moment he made. I know he had to get back into the game. He was one 0 down. He made those positive changes. He drew the game. And, drew the yeah. game. You know, and then last week's performance very good. Eleanor at Ibrox still only finished one 0 Um So he's done pretty well so far. Well, this could be his best afternoon at Ibrox. Getting a bit tense at Paisley, apparently. Stephen Robinson animated, looking to try and get something. He's surprised St Mirren have drawn a blank up until this point. Um, I thought that would have been a draw. I thought that would have been a hard, Fair enough. hard fought game. Have um, you seen a bit of goals Aberdeen concede? Yeah. yeah probably surprised in where Mar- uh, St Mirren are sitting on the table. Well, that was a big part of the post match for me, Warnock, the other night, you know. Do you, do you think we'll win any more games if we defend like that? As I've never really been asked that by a manager, but yeah. there we are. Yeah, You know what, he's got a point, because a lot of the defending is comical at times um, throughout the season. But I don't know how much confidence your defenders take when they've just been outed there. Uh, but oh, listen, they're reacting to it in a positive fashion just now. They've got another 15 minutes to hold on. The thing about Rangers, Rangers need two goals. You know, the... the one okay gets you a draw. You then, you know, be giving Celtic the chance to go level with you on points and possibly go top on goal difference uh, if they can maintain their midweek form at Tynecastle tomorrow. So Rangers don't mm. just need one goal; they need two. I remember? Do you remember that one? It was one of. I know it ended up being a procession, but the kind of moment when everyone realised it was on Rangers won the title. Motherwell were one up at Ibrox. Do you remember it? Callum Lang scored inside six minutes. It got to 73 minutes. Motherwell oh, were yeah, still one yeah. up. And Kamar Roof got two mm. that day. And Cedric Eaton added a third. Mm. Uh, so we will see if he can have a say. He's come on. But Motherwell do have the lead. Uh, what we got there? Ange Ball is back level. Spurs one, Palace one. Timo Werner with the goal there. Um, but we've got enough on our plate I do like to mention some of the goals down south I'm sorry Hugh I can't bring you a Brighton one they still no, have trail no, no. Um, does there be out that's because it's Billy Gilmore still suspended that'll be why they'll be yeah, missing him he's a yeah. huge part of that that'll team. be why have you seen the documentary the Scottish FA have produced I've not no. seen it yet it's yeah, a feature no. length Billy Gilmore documentary I, like, I uh, feature in it very briefly that bit's not so good so, Are you so, in so it? it's not meant no, just like commenting on, on Billy Gilmore um, it's not I was going to say you should watch it, it's really good, but that makes it sound like I think my bits are very good. That's not yeah. what I meant. No, I think that's just good. It's just yeah. good to see him do so well. Yeah, you've been waiting all day to bring that up. So when you've got that magic TV <laughs> with, all mag- the, with all those options you've got on it, maybe you should uh, check that out at some point. Yeah, I certainly will. That'd be a good watch. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you how I yeah. think you looked. Mm, yeah, I'm sure you Came will. Across. Are you actually on camera? It's not just oh, that audio. Of, uh, it's a documentary. It's a YouTube I know, I thought effort. it's just a voiceover. Mm-hmm. Maybe you'd drop nah. in and. No. Okay, I will give it a watch. He's, um, anyway, missing for Brighton today, as we said. Newcastle two wills nil. That's quite a big scoreline. Newcastle have had their problems of late, but let's check in on that teaser, Hugh, shall we? Yeah. I have played alongside Brian Graham and Joe Aribo. I have been managed by Peter Houston and Mark Hughes. I have been in the PFA team of the year twice. And the only major honours I won were in Scotland. Who am I? Well, Daz ruins this for me every week. Oh, because because you write down the answer, you turn it to Gordon, I obviously see it, and then that's me. Would I'm you the got equation. it? I would, have, I would have worked that out, I think. That was quite easy. Yeah. I was on the right lines with my guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll do some wrong answers and get them out the way uh, to try and help you along. Lots of people now starting to get it. Albion has gone for Steve Davis No Honoured oh. today Wasn't he at Ibrox Prior to the game More shouts for Effie Ambrose I'm going to have to look into um, <laughs> The, oh, the no. links there No no, no it's, It just it's, uh, it's, It seems like a f- Interesting wrong answer I'm not for a second Saying there's anything untoward um, So keep your guesses coming It is not Effie Ambrose Do you know what I'm thinking I think the format you still, I'm not taking anything away from you Those days are gone right? I'm trying mm. to give you credit You still need the knowledge You still need to put it together Yeah. But I've noticed we, we, We're following the same pattern Every week with a question now You know, Played with A and B mm. Managed by X and Y And then another bit of info I think we need A, a full revamp of the format If we're going to catch mm. you out Just don't give me the clues And see if I, I can just, come up with I just feel like <laughs> name, name a player I, <laughs> Name any player, player yeah. <laughs> I just feel like you've, you've mastered the formula I have or we give you the answer 
and you have to guess the clue. There you go, here. <laughs> That's brilliant. That is good. Everybody yeah. will play That'd at home. That'd be more entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. And ball certainly is working. He's two one up now. Yeah, they love doing that. I taught them, don't they? Going to go behind and sparking into life. Yeah, doing not too badly. Um, O'Hara and Taylor for Boyd Munson Bolton. So St Mirren rolling that dice, trying to make something happen there. I'm sure Neil Warnock knows that his defensive frailties in recent weeks suggest that maybe a second goal is the best thing they could do. So we spoke about that psychology earlier. What do you do? Do you start getting forced back? Do you become cautious? He's got the copas on on the touchline, Neil oh, Warnock. Of course he Bouncing up and down, ready to go. 70, 74, 75, Five. would you still be wearing copas? Nah, nah, nah. I don't, I nah, don't wear, give up the copas. Yeah. I don't even wear white trainers now at uh, 60. What age am I? 61? You wear worse than white trainers, remember the one? Yes, you do. Remember you and I worked at Hamden, the National Stadium, a place that used to require a certain level of gravitas and decorum, and you wore those Nike efforts with the big green air bubbles in them. They're (laughs) fortunes. Because I put it on on Instagram ages ago, and you got slaughtered for them. No, I did not. No, I did not. I remember when he came in the studio with them, (laughs) and they certainly caught my eye. Somebody gave them them. Oh, no doubt. My attention was immediately drawn to them. I I seen them in the shop, and I thought, "That's I'm over them. That's somebody's... um, that's somebody's uncle that has been able to acquire those for you. By the way, I tell you, I, <laughs> knows I, a guy. A lot of good feedback from them. I've, I've asked people, do you like my sneakers? Yes, sneakers. we do. Sneakers. <laughs> yes, we do. You know, I actually googled them that night to see <laughs> how much they're actually expensive. That, yeah, I thank thought they you. were the cheap well, ones. That's my point. Some, like I say, <clears> somebody's got a cousin or an uncle that can get you Nike trainers, yeah. and they've hooked him up. The yeah. days of me going in and buying two different size shoes are... Is it not like that Kevin Bridges sketch? That guy that can get you anything for 40 quid? You want 50 quid in cash? 40 quid. 40, 40 quid. quid. Oh, they were expensive. Yeah, well, I think I'm still... Give me a size pay- 9. I think I'm still paying them up. Okay. That month. Clarna. Yeah. Triantes PayPal. and Cadden on. Marcondes and Miller off. So Hibs, remember, do still lead there but it's in the balance there's a one goal advantage there's a one goal advantage for Dundee against Kelly there's a one goal advantage for Motherwell at Ibrox and there's a one goal advantage for Aberdeen in Paisley <laughs> chance we can get all draws here by the way big end to no. the games oh, Where, yeah. where's the late drama Hugh come on you're usually good it has to be at Ibrox do you think so? it has to be so if in Aberdeen. otherwise it's the, the, the shock result of the season so far Mm, I'm going to go squash face at Easter Road, Fraser Washer. <laughs> <laughs> what did you call him? Squash face. Have you ever seen him? I don't, I don't even know what that squash. means. That's <laughs> definitely personal. It doesn't even make sense. I don't, I don't <laughs> think it makes sense, nor is it accurate. His chin comes up to his mouth. All I think that's happened here. Fraser on to respond to that. You can't be having a go. All I think that's happened here is Roger Hanna's on holiday, so oh, you've got no one to helmet. slag. Where is he? <laughs> the heat. Where's the heat? <laughs> Why did you just say that? <laughs> Where is he? I was missing him today. I swear. I'm taking Grant Musk over to Oh. <laughs> He's missing him. I'm missing I miss him. Oh, man. <laughs> Please don't call anyone <laughs> that. The, sniper, <laughs> the sniper's dream. <laughs> like I know what you meant because you you tend to criticise his size of yeah, head. Yeah. But what did you think of it? But that's just that's just a word that I can't have you use oh, on no. this show. <laughs> the word that you did pick. Don't say that again. Okay. <laughs> oh, throwing. Ah. Uh. Magnificent. Oh, we've got another goal, uh, luckily okay. for us. <laughs> goal flashes with M and D Green Pharmacy. Where is it? Ibrox. Easter Road, and it's Hibbs. Dylan Levitt, a low side foot finish, twelve yards. Maybe that one is not in the balance anymore. Dylan Levitt doing the business in front of goal, and Hibbs two. Ross County nil. No, uh, it's certainly not in the balance anymore. That's good night, Vienna, uh, for Ross County. So, who knows? Livy currently winning at Perth. Who knows? Maybe the great escape. Maybe they've done a Steve McQueen. Maybe it's on. Ten man Kelly still making a game of it in Dundee. So, again, you never know. You never know. Just maybe. 
But it's a big goal for Hibs, isn't it? That's the one where you get that sigh of relief, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, without doubt. Yeah, yeah. Because I think too often this season they've been in a position where the opportunity is always there for the opposition to get back in the game draw. Not too often has Nick Montgomery had a chance going into the last four or five minutes that he can actually enjoy the game. So, well done to them. And what like they, they could... Well, they won't actually move into top six now, but they're keeping on Dundee's tail. We are minutes away from an epic open line at five o'clock. If this score line at Ibrox remains, what a pivotal afternoon it could be. What an unexpectedly pivotal afternoon it could be. Spartans won these 5 3, Alan Troughton, with another goal this afternoon. Yeah, it's going to be a a big finish at Ibrox either way, isn't it? Yeah, um, I, I'll tell you what, if Motherwell can get out of there with three points, what three points that is. If you look at Aberdeen, Motherwell, Hibs, Dundee, all going the right way this afternoon, um, getting that gap to St Johnston, Ross County, Livingston, that'd be a terrific result for them. But it's all about just looking up the way for Aberdeen, Motherwell, Hibs and Dundee for that top six space. 87, 88 minutes <coughs> gone now at... Ibrox Rangers won Motherwell 2 and the fans have listened to Philippe Clement yeah. nobody's going anywhere no, well, the buses, trains, subways, ferries, cars can wait mm. they've all stayed to try and roar their team on to get something oh the Palmerston Pep will not take this well Queen of the South have conceded in the 89th minute it's Queen of the South 2 Stirling Albion 2 oh big chance Rangers a huge double save there by Liam Kelly in the Motherwell goal First from Lundstrom, then from Yilmaz, and the Motherwell goalkeeper comes out on top for now. The much criticised Motherwell goalkeeper comes out on top. So I can only imagine what it's like inside Ibrox. They're not going, the fans, because they're desperate. They're absolutely desperate. They'll take a draw now. And let's not forget do you remember the length of that VAR check <laughs> for the penalty? Yeah. yeah. And the substitutions. This is not going to be About six minutes. an insignificant period of time. I think you could be looking at more. Thank you. So? Yeah, I think it's got one of those. I'm with you. I think Rangers would take feelings. a draw right now. Yeah, they would. Scott Wright's getting ready to come on to see if he can spark something. That Rangers obviously have done well to combat injuries in loads of areas, but they, you wondered if and when at any point. Oh, big chance! Connor Goldson's header in the middle of the box, but he sent it wide. From a Yilmaz cross uh, You did wonder if at some point And it might not happen yet Because they might come back and win But out wide if this would catch up on Rangers Seema, brilliant start to the season yeah. Front of goal, out injured Matondo out injured They sign Oscar Cortez He hits the ground running mm. Everybody's got high hopes Out injured No um, doubt McCausland today uh, off, off injured, injured. Yeah, Scott yeah. White coming on uh, So without doubt you know They've had uh, really bad luck In that department and people say, oh, they've got a big squad, they should deal with it. But that's particularly unlucky when you get those creative players out for so long. Sterling's the one who goes off for Scott Wright. <sighs> so, professionalism out the window from me there. My apologies. <laughs> Eight added at Fur Park. Oh. You know Eight. what I, I was going to say? That must be hard for a player nowadays to get your head around mentally. You look at the board, you see, oh, 90 minutes, one there. Get eight. And, and you get eight. Think how huge that is. Yeah. Doesn't it mean to say that's like going back to the eighty second minute and you mm. think, oh, we've still got a long way to go here. So there'll be a, a, a fair few chances, uh, I would imagine, for Rangers. Eight minutes added on. Yeah, it's a bit of the take them, and that's that's what pressure does to you. Can you take them? These are the these are the games. Have you managed to drag anything from this? Again, you would look back and see how important well, was that point. It was uh, six minutes added on last Sunday that did for Motherwell. They were off one Off the line, Fabio Silva cleared off the line. Motherwell are hanging on, and it remains Rangers one, Motherwell two. I did say last Sunday, one one ninety minutes. After ninety six minutes, Motherwell won Celtic three. So these are the kind of things that can happen. So the tension. At Ibrox must be sky high. Oh, I can almost sense it from here. Yeah. Tension in this studio is quite high, to be frank with you. Four added in David Fuel's game at East. Uh, sorry, at the Smyza Stadium. Are we going to get a St Mirren equaliser? No, no. I no? think the the meeting of minds that was Neil Warnock and Gordon Diel 
uh, earlier today. I think you might be required now to go and meet the Aberdeen bus every Saturday. You might be the good luck charm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think the fact that they arrived maybe a little bit later than they normally do uh, didn't give them time to sit and think. Just get in there, get ready, get out, warm up and go and try and win the game. That'd be a valuable three points for Aberdeen. Great insight. <laughs> Timekeeping. We have to round like off the that. teaser, but I feel like I can't possibly break away for even a second. There's another Connor Goldson header wide from a tavernier cross. There are only two ways of analysing this. It's inevitable and it's coming, or it's one of those days for yeah, Rangers. You yeah. just wonder which it'll turn out to be. Well, uh, I will take the view that it's coming. The draw is coming. What are you nah, saying? No, I think I think Motherwell can hold out. I think it's their day. I really do. When it went 1 1, Hugh, I was a bit fearful that the roof could cave in for Motherwell, but all credit to them. They got the part, they get that goal 2 1. Casting vote to Mark Wilson then. Go on, Mark. I think they'll snatch a goal. Do you? Yeah, I do. I think they're creating enough. Oh, doesn't they sound flat? Oh, there's a penalty check. <laughs> Where for? For St Mirren. It's one of those inside or outside the box, so it will be what they call a factual decision. The foul has been given. So remember, the referee's not required to go to the monitor now. They'll check it. If it's inside the box, it becomes a penalty. Oh, no. So there's <laughs> no. Who's, who's there? David Friel. Oh. So the foul given, you then look at whether the. It's Nicky Devlin penalised. He was dropped in midweek. He's, he's having a time at just now, Nicky Devlin. Really struggling. And if this is a penalty, it's converted, then David Friel will have. An entertaining press conference again on his hands. Warnock will explode, you would have to imagine. Full time Hibbs, Fraser Wishart. Yeah, uh, behind two, Ross County Nell all came good for the Eastern Road team in the second half. First 45 was really poor from both sides, but Hibbs did improve in the second and scored two goals through Maizana, Maya Lida, and Dylan Levitt, the substitute, and it gave Hibbs a deserved three points. Not much to talk about in the first half, 17th minute, first effort from either team, Maya Lida, who latched onto a vent to pass and they had a low shot. Straight at Wickens, he should have saved it easily. The keeper spilled the ball, but he made amends. He was up quickly to block the Maconda's rebound, but that was could come back to haunt the goalkeeper because he spilled one in the second half that cost a goal. County only effort, 25 minutes. Maconda's with a slack pass in midfield with Tory drove forward. 20 yard shot pushed away by Marshall, and that was it. Hope for better in the second half, and it was within a minute. Maconda's had brought out a good low save from Wickens with a side foot shot, low to the keeper's right from about eight yards. My leader passed the venter then inexplicably dummied a low boil cross in the sixth yard line the chance was gone when he, he could have shot himself in the 59th minute Hibb deservedly opened the scoring disaster for county keeper Wickens there wasn't much danger when Boyle drove a low cross into the sixth yard box the keeper spilled the ball and Maya Lida was first to the loose ball to tap the ball into the back of the net county had to be more positive and their best chance came in sub Brandon Keller good run on the left hand side low cross really good powerful side foot by Brophy from 8 yards saved by David Marshall with his feet good save by the goalie but Brophy should have scored Hibbs brought on Triantes and Cadden to try and see the game out they wanted that second goal to kill off County Fish headed a boil corner wide it was a decent chance but the second did come in 86 minutes a nice move down the right led to the ball being passed into the path of Dylan Levitt by Ellie Yuan. it was a really cool finish first time by the midfield player side footed the ball into the net and down to the goalkeeper's right good week for Hibbs 7 points from three games keeps them on the tails of Dundee and maybe even St Mern in the race for top six full time at Easter Road the burning two Ross County nil free kick James Tavernier territory Rangers trailing in the 96th minute he puts it over the bar penalty St Mirren at the very very end of that one what an opportunity for St Mirren it was Devlin on Olusanya it was a foul VAR had to determine whether it was inside or outside the box very keen to get Neil Warnock's thoughts on this if it goes in we will find out can St Mirren nick it right on the full time whistle Mark O'Hara's on isn't he but he's had some issues from the penalty spot this season I wonder if he's going to take it we've not reached the conclusion at Ibrox yet this is when you know it's getting to the tense part of the season it feels tense in this studio so goodness knows how you're feeling at the grounds Mark O'Hara is going to take the penalty and it is a huge one for St Mirren and for Aberdeen still nothing from Rangers they've had a lot of chances they haven't managed to find the equaliser there is still time there's a oh and there's a goal as well at Dens Park Goal Flashes with m and Green Pharmacy. Ten man Kelly Robbie Dees has forced the ball in and that one were level and St Johnston have equalised in the 87th minute against Livingston and in Paisley. What's happened with the penalty? 
Goal Flashes with M&D Green Pharmacy. What a finish. We are getting all sorts of late drama. Not at Ibrox yet, but everywhere else. St Mirren 1, Aberdeen 1, Dundee 2, Kilmarnock 2, St Johnston 1, Livy 1. We're tied up everywhere. Hibs is finished. They've won. There's still time for Rangers to level it, but they're running out of it, Hugh. Well, it would be cruel now uh, if Motherwell were, were to be denied their three points. However, the game is cruel. But perhaps you are right. Perhaps it is just one of those days. They've had a, a goal disallowed. They've had a claim for a penalty disallowed. Uh, before the game, they lost uh, Cortez to a serious injury. Uh, it's just been a, a, a bad day for Rangers so far. And uh, I repeat, we are minutes away from an epic open line if this result or the scoreline becomes the result from Ibrox. And they surely have played their eight minutes added on by now. Yeah, nearly there. Nearly there. The full-time whistles are starting to go. VAR's now checking a possible handball for the uh, uh, Dundee against Kilmarnock. Is that for the goal? Is it linked to the goal? Is that goal perhaps not going to stand? Oh, oh the no, uncertainty. Because no. um, you're fast. looking at one of the results of the day, if you take everything into account, Kelly, we're trailing and then... Uh, got a man sent off and it looks like they have levelled things up it's happening everywhere Darwin Nunez I noticed has just scored oh Paisley Goal Flashes with M&D Green Pharmacy St Mirren have done it trailing <gasps> in extra added time and they've turned it round they've won 2-1 you would imagine against Aberdeen and it's full time at Ibrox Sandra McLean Yes, Rangers 1, Motherwell 2, the full-time scores and boos on the full-time whistle as well as an unexpected twist in the title race takes place. Philip Wontsai dropping all three points at home to Motherwell. It was an early goal for the visitors that set them on their way. Jack Vale was too strong for John Souter down the right channel, muscled him out his way then. He played the ball to the penalty spot. There was Steel Bear, the first time finish in off the post, and that put them 1 0 up. They'd started better, but Rangers then came into it. A few chances before the break, but none of them were really clear cut. Liam Kelly forced into a couple of saves from long range efforts. McCausland and Dessert denied as well, with the ball bouncing around the box. Ross McCausland then forced off with an injury following a challenge from Dan Casey. After the break, Serial Dessert had the ball in the back of the net almost instantly, but that was flagged offside, confirmed by VAR that one then further VAR involvement not long after Alan Muir called to the screen after Stephen O'Donnell slid in on Fabio Silva in the box penalty given James Tavernier stepped up to take and what a strike into the top corner for one all Rangers posed more of an attacking threat but it was Mullerwell who took the vital chance Blair Spittle with a great cross from the right and there was Dan Casey heading in at the back post to silence this Ibrox crowd and put the Steelman back ahead as time ticked on Motherwell they were holding on eight minutes added and in that time a huge double save from Liam Kelly to deny Lundstrom and then Red Van Yilmaz Connor Goldson with a couple of headers that went wide and Fabio Silva had a header of his own this one cleared off the line Motherwell held on a big big result for them and a huge shot on the arm for Celtic ahead of that trip to Tynecastle tomorrow the full time score at Ibrox Rangers 1 Motherwell 2 Wow, what do you make of that? 01419511025 Rangers fans, it won't just have been you who didn't see it coming Not many expecting this to be the fixture that one of the twists came And it has huge opportunity for Celtic tomorrow What do you make of it? 01419511025 I can't believe the end we've had all across the board That goal was given Kilmarnock have levelled it right at the death St Mirren were trailing right at the death And have flipped it completely on its head And beaten Aberdeen How will Neil Warnock take that? I don't even know if we've got any other full time whistles yet Such has been the late drama Fraser Wishart's halfway back across the M8 He was finished ages ago A routine 2-0 win for Hibs against Ross County but what a day these phone lines are lighting up already 0141 951 1025 I had a funny feeling you would want to get involved maybe you Motherwell fans want to join in as well let's see if we've got a full time whistle yet no I don't think we do how incredible that the late drama has spun this on and on it's 5 o'clock and we've only had two full time whistles still going in Paisley Neil Warnock is going to be 
box office after this. Well, we discussed prior to the kickoff. Could this be the day Aberdeen have a decision to make about Neil Warnock? When you run out of luck on top of everything else, when you are clearly bereft of luck, time to have a, a review of the situation. Full time Paisley, David Friel. Full time Gordon, St Mirren 2, Aberdeen 1. I've just wrapped up every single note I had. And Gianni Infantino, welcome to Scottish football. What a spectacle, what a game. Aberdeen took the lead after 60 seconds, corner bar, and one of the best goals you'll see all season. Right foot, straight into the top corner. They held on for over 90 minutes after that. It looked like they were going to hold on to get their first win in two months, their first win of the Neil Warnock reign. And then, four minutes into the time were played, I think, sorry, were given. I think we played eight, and St Mirren scored twice. Toyosi Olisanya on as a sub, he won the penalty. There was a bad delay for an age as Nick Walsh and Kevin Clancy decided that the foul on Olisanya from Nicky Devlin was inside the box. Mark Ahara, on as a sub, took the penalty, made it one each, and then, just when you thought the drama was over, St Mirren scored again. Ball into the box, Mikel Mandron headed across, and Olisanya won the game. Unbelievable scenes, all the subs on the pitch. Neil Warnock is raging. He's just berated Nick Walsh coming off the pitch. The Aberdeen fans are clapping... Well, sorry, Aberdeen players are clapping the fans that are still here. But what a game. What a win for St Mirren. Aberdeen, the crisis continues. Full time, St Mirren 2, Aberdeen 1. Wow, what a day it's been in the Scottish Premiership. Drama pretty much everywhere. And we're not even finished at Dens. Two minutes past five on a Saturday evening. And we're not finished yet. But you can get involved. Look at those phone lines lighting up in front of my very eyes. 01419511. 1025, get your calls in. Rangers fans, Motherwell fans, Celtic fans, by any chance, what did you make of that result at Ibrox? 01419511025. David Friel is away for a lie down. Andrew McLean's away for a lie down. They better get themselves back up to bring us managerial reaction. We still don't appear to be finished at Dens Park. Let me just quickly tell you whilst we wait. Hugh, read that question very quickly. I won't even do the dramatic music. Yep, yep. I have played alongside Brian Graham and Joe Arebo. I have been managed by Peter Houston and Mark Hughes. I have been in the PFA team of the year twice. The only major honours I won were in Scotland. Who am I? You are? Stuart Armstrong. Stuart Armstrong. Well done to Ryan Gilroy in third, Anton Wilson in second, and Jack Smith in first. Well done for knowing Stuart Armstrong. Very impressively done by Gordon DL as well. But we're still waiting. What on earth, Dave Galloway? He's got a long journey up the road. There we go. Full time, Dave. Yeah, full time. Dundee 2, Kilmarnock 2. There was no sign of a Dundee hangover from there. Hammering by Celtic as they made a strong start. Josh Mulligan's deflected drive from the edge of the box was turned around the post by Will Dennis. And they took the lead after 11 minutes. A good run down the left by Scott Tiffany. He cut inside and his drive hit the post. Then Dennis and in for an OG but the visitors equalised after 35 minutes Armstrong's cross was headed back across goal by Joe Wright and Marley Watkins scored from 3 or 4 yards out that saw them really step things up Danny Armstrong's free kick was turned over by uh, John McCracken and from the resultant corner kick we had a possible penalty turned down after a VAR review Derek McInnes' team ending the first half on top and that continued after the break Marley Watkins burst through but John McCracken came off his line to block very well indeed but Dundee came right back at their visitors and Luke McCowan made it 2-1 from the penalty spot in 63 minutes Will Dennis pushed the ball onto the post but he couldn't keep it out agonising for him in it went, trickled over the line Lewis Mayo was sent off for conceding the pen by hauling Scott Tiffany back so uh, 10 man Kilmarnock would they fold? No they didn't uh, to their credit they made a, a right good game of it but uh, Michael Mellon almost made it 3-1 Dundee thundering a drive off the bar from the edge of the box now I did say Kelly kept at it and they uh, dramatically equalised in the 91st minute Robbie Dees knocking the ball in following a corner kick sparking uh, 
bedlam uh, in the away end. Really good uh, Kilmarnock support up here at Dens Park today. A point apiece overall, just about right. Thoroughly entertaining match. Dundee 2, Kilmarnock 2. 01419511025. A sensational day of SPFL action. What did you make of it? After the action, it's your reaction. 01419511025. Clyde One Super Scoreboards Open Line. Hugh Evans, Mark Wilson, and Gordon DL are here, and we're all asking you to give us your thoughts on an unbelievable day in the Scottish Premiership. Motherwell have gone to Ibrox and not only ended Rangers' winning run, but come away with all three points, meaning it's advantage to Celtic if they can take advantage tomorrow at Tynecastle. Aberdeen were leading in Paisley in like the ninety. 90- third or fourth minute and St Mirren won it there was late drama at Dens it has been a sensational day so what did you all make of it 01419511025 Derek is a Rangers fan how do you feel after that Derek hi panel how are you doing good you I'm alright the um, main reason I'm calling is uh, the, see the tackle in McCorsland today the high boot uh, he studs were showing the mother of player studs and he wasn't even it never even went to far. I mean, it never even booked. Never even got booked. And I'm just one phone up to say what is the point of that because the same thing happened Wednesday night when uh, the, the commander player stuck his arm out and it was a clear penalty, more more than a penalty than what Lundstrom's um, handball was. So I'm just phone basically phone up to say why is why is that, that tackle today and not even going to far? They should have been down to ten men. It wasn't even a foul though, was it? On McCausland? No, I mean in terms of given. I'm not saying in my opinion. Like it, it's not like you know VAR would to check for a. It's not like he was. I'm, I'm actually asking you because I'm assuming you were there and you know we'd across all the games. You know, there wasn't a free kick given, is what I'm asking you. Yeah. No, it was a free kick given for the foul. On it McCausland. was given, was it? Sorry, right? Okay, I didn't. I yeah. didn't think it was. Um, yeah, Hugh, I had a feeling. When teams lose, yeah. fans tend to come in with a sense of grievance and injustice. It well, you know, it's a, it's a two-way street. You know, the, the Rangers also get the benefit of VAR. Uh, and, you know, the contentious referee decisions are part of every game. Um, I just wonder if Derek, in his disappointment, is looking for something, anything. Uh, you know, Motherwell should have been reduced to 10 men. Uh, is that the story of the day? Um, no, the story of the day is that Rangers were a goal down, got it back to one all, and you assumed it would half an hour to go, Rangers would go on and win the match. The roof would cave in on Motherwell, but the exact opposite happened. Motherwell went away and scored another one against all odds. So I, I can't speak about the, the McCausland incident at, at, at great length. Mark, I've managed to find the wonders of modern technology. Someone sent it. What do you think? No, so to, uh, to, to try and since this is radio to describe it, Dan Casey wins the ball. It's verging on a clearance more than a tackle. But then, obviously, as we know now, you, you have to look at follow through and you have to look at what happens thereafter. And we've only seen one angle, which isn't great either. I'd like to see it from another side. But what do you think on initial well, well, reaction? Yeah, the angle I'm seeing it, you can quite clearly see Casey takes the ball when he. Cl- takes the ball, he studs her up, but listen, I think that's unavoidable and McCausland then makes contact with him. As, I don't think that's a red card. Not for me. Gordon, you're not sure? I can tell no, the look in your face. No, Do you not know, think McCausland... I think, I think you look at that as it endangering an opponent. I think the way he comes in there. I, I'm i surprised that... Uh, was it a yellow card? No, no, uh, although Derek said it was, I've now double checked. There was that's no not a foul. Card. The free kick wasn't given. Forget card. There wasn't. All a free right. Kick. Okay. I'm I'm quite surprised at that I could see that going. Really? Going mm. Yeah. I, I, the more I look at it, the more I see Casey clearing the ball, and because McCausland's going towards him, McCausland tries to get the ball. He makes contact with Casey coming through as well. So and by I don't the way, see how that could. This is this is maybe a semantic point. Right, but obviously, a sore one from the cause obviously, Var, Var can't give yellows. So, for all we, you know, what I mean, once there's once there's a foul not given, if Var doesn't think it's a red, it can't mm. give a yellow. But it's just a semantic point. People might still think it's a red. That's fine. I was just sort of. Hugh, what's your verdict? Us. We've went. I, I I think it's a yellow card, which wouldn't be given by Var. No. Um, Derek, so overall, is that your feeling today? There's no sort of disappointment at Rangers' performance. You just feel like hard done by by the referee. 
No, I mean, going back to what you said earlier, uh, if Rangers had won the day, I was still phoning up about that tackle today. So it's not me phoning up saying I'm bitter over the result. At the end of the day, we're still, still a title race one anyway, do you know what I mean? It's only like, even the Celtic win the more, only a point ahead, so um, basically I've just phoned up to make a point about that tackle. Yeah, it's, not really one, it's not really one that many people expected Rangers to drop points in, though, is it? I, I know people you know thought twists and turns, but you wouldn't have had that down as, as a defeat today, would you? No, you wouldn't have had down as a defeat, no, definitely. But these things happen in football, it's that... Do you know what I mean? That's just unpredictable sometimes, and that's just the way it goes. Yeah. But Everyone assumes now that, uh, oh, it's advantage Celtic. It's only advantage Celtic if they go to a very difficult place, possibly minus their captain and inspiration, Callum McGregor, with very few fans behind them because Rangers and Celtic don't get many tickets for Tynecastle. So I repeat, it's only advantage Celtic if they go there and Pick up where they left off against Dundee. Yeah, look, only time will tell how significant it is. But like I say, Derek, understand why he presents it that way. Oh, you know, this was going to happen, and there was going to be twists and turns, and, and still relaxed. But that doesn't take away that this was meant to be on paper a procession for Rangers. That's the way it's been yeah. presented to us all week. That the tough game was Hearts, and the tough game was Kilmarnock. Rangers would win today, and then Celtic have to go to a tough place tomorrow, which they still do. No, to, to, to lose that game at home mm. is, it's, it's a big day It's a massive day um, They come through the test of hearts And the, the battered hearts And I thought that Motherwell could have had the same treatment today Especially at Ibrox And the way Rangers were going uh, But they set their stall out And when you hear them hitting the bar And then Rangers got the part Got a penalty kicks One each You're thinking Well it's just a matter of time But all credit to Stuart Kettlewell, he's went, done his homework, it's worked for him, he's got that result, he held on, he had to play eight minutes extra time. I don't think even the the Motherwell fans going along there today, they would have bit your hand off for a draw. To get three points was absolutely massive and that's a blow to Rangers because every Rangers fan had that for a home win, let's not be kidding. Here. Derek's not happy with the referee, what about Scott who's a Rangers fan, where did it go wrong for you Scott? Scott, can you hear us? Well, let's let's switch Scott to the other line and see if we can get him uh, back on. Don't forget, if you want to tweet us as well, at Clyde SSB, you are more uh, than welcome. I can see lots of Celtic fans trying to phone as well, which I thought might be the case. Scott, can you hear us now? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, all good. Where did it go wrong today? Um, probably just the overall performance wasn't good enough. I do, I do think that injuries are playing a big part at the moment, but... Uh, my main point is really just to I've not I've not heard what's getting said. I'm just at the game myself, but it was just a, a reaction. He say basically, I'm probably speaking for majority of Rangers fans when I think that we're still we're still right behind the team. Um, come on, managed to get me to you what you said up until this point, and we've just got to hopefully you keep saying that. You know, obviously Cortez, I think was just coming into a game. That's him injured long term. The Coslands would ask the day we're playing a right back at mid or left mid um, so I it was just to say basically 8 10 weeks ago I had to your hand up to be in this position so it was just going to stick behind the team come on sorry they got a cut in the bag when the last 16 of Europe we're in a title fight we didn't think we'd be in so let's just stick behind the team and see where it takes us we've still to play Celtic price and I think we're more than capable of beating them so does this sorry Hugh does this just feel like a a blip, Scott, then that sort of happens every now and then, or was there worrying signs that you think could, you know, lead to a disappointing end to the season? Is it just a one off? What do you think? No, I don't think there, there, there wasn't any worrying signs for me. I mean, we did, we had, we, there was ones cleared past the line, there was box, there was a cracking double save at the end for Kelly, but always going to happen. We've, we've been on such points. Um, it's obviously it's still disappointing when it happens, but ah, yes, you're going to get this throughout a season, and we've just got to hold it come on and pick the team back up. But I would, no, I wouldn't say there was any worrying signs. I would just say that that's one of the games today where could have played for another 90 minutes, and we probably still wouldn't have you know, beat Millerwell. So um, they played well to be fair to them. Do you know what I mean? They, they took their chances when they had them, they defended well, and then played on the long ball. That feel better. 
comfy up front as well. So I think he ran goals and rag at the time. So, but I, I think that we're still in a crack position, a position I didn't think we'd be in a good few weeks ago. So. I'm still right up for the fight, and I think Rangers will want to win the league. I think that's certainly fair, Hugh. <laughs> like, I know we're very knee-jerk here, but Rangers have, what, what was it, 11 games in a row in all competitions? Yeah. Um, you're hardly going to... Well, you shouldn't spit the dummy and go into full crisis mode on the back of one defeat. No, no, but no, no. it clearly is it, It's a, a big one in terms of versus expectation going into today. I said the result at Celtic Park on Wednesday dropped out of the sky. I repeat the phrase for this game today at Ibrooks. that's dropped right out of the sky no one and Gordon Dale's correct even Motherwell fans didn't think Motherwell would win at Ibrooks. and if they do say so then they're, 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 I thought I thought they would actually uh, yeah just to be no honest. you did yeah, not did. but anyway uh, it, it we've reached that stage we wanted a white hot race for the title and we've now got one and I repeat it's only an advantage to Celtic if they go there and win. If they go to Tynecastle and lose, then Rangers remain two points in front. So it is utterly fascinating, and that's the way it's supposed to be. As soon as Rangers did drop points, Scott, somebody or many people would say, ah, is this the pressure getting to them? It doesn't sound like you're buying that theory. No, definitely no. No, I think that was. I mean, the, the pressure's been on us probably even more so when we're, when we've been further behind. So, I even even to be at this stage of the season and back in a title fight, I think that shows that the, the pressure's not got to us. I think, like I say, for me to get that game of days just one of the days, then we've just got to put it behind us and move on quickly. And obviously, there's a lot of games coming up as well. So, no, nah, I think we'll be fine. Yeah, I think the. Um, reaction that, that Scott gives is probably representative of quite a lot of Rangers fans Scott doesn't feel like there were many worrying signs that he, he thinks would go forward be interested to see what Philippe Clement thinks if he can if he can resign it to just being an off day or if he looks at the defending for the goals looks at the way Theo Bear did against Conor Goldson and John mm. Souter and, and starts to because up until now there have been a lot of pre- Rangers have hardly conceded any goals they've got a very good record but Theo Bear had a a fun afternoon by the looks of it I, I was praising them uh, <clears throat> about a week ago in this show about how good they were defensively especially away from home um, I didn't think they would give up two goals today uh, Ibrox I think one or two fans not happy with the, the defence um, I think the manager will come out Gordon I don't think he'll come out and have a dig at uh, any of his players I think he'll come out and, and say it as it is um, I think he'll congratulate Motherwell but the, I think the caller's right there's a lot of Important games to go. They've got Benfica as well. They've got Hibs in the cup, um, and then they've got very important league games. So that t- that to the Rangers manager is probably a blip, but all credit must go to Mother Watts. A terrific result. It is indeed. Oh one four one nine five one one zero two five. And if you want to give us your reaction, now's the time. Oh one four one nine five one one zero two five. Clyde One Super Scoreboards Open Line. What a day it's been across Scottish football. Let's not hang around much longer and go back to the phones. John is a Celtic fan. How's it going, John? Hi there. Hi, Gordon. What's your point tonight, John? Without jumping on the bandwagon, Gordon, I would like to kind of pick up on Hugh Evans. I've listened to the phone in since I've the final whistles today, and I've yet to hear Hugh mentioning the turmoil is Celtic Park uh, uh, Ibrox compared to Celtic Park Rangers have been beat today the fact that Celtic have been beaten twice this season Rangers have been beaten five times to me that looks like a wee touch of kind of a mm, not too sure here to be honest with you it looks, looks a bit dodgy but I don't, I don't hear you saying that Philippe Clement, Clement is in a, a shaky nail the way Brendan Rodgers is and I, I, I seem to just think Hugh just seems to think he, he just jumps on the Celtic bandwagon all the time uh, I don't recall ever saying that Brendan Rodgers was on a shaky nail for a start can you recall me saying that? no that's my phrase yeah well you, you've, you've turned it to me you said that I don't you know Hugh said he was on a shaky nail 
You've certainly, you've certainly kind of a ridiculed the guy, haven't you? No, I, no, I wouldn't say ridiculed. I've mentioned factual things about the signing policy, about games lost that shouldn't have been lost. But you get the signing policy. The fact that points are dropped today at Ibrox. I don't hear you ridiculing Rangers the way you ridicule Celtic. Uh, I mean, ridicule. I said to you we're in the white hot atmosphere of a title race now, which is the way it's supposed to be and the way we want it to be. Correct. And I've said that it's only an advantage to Celtic if you go to Tynecastle tomorrow and win the game. Listen, so, I'm not I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about today. I've not heard you coming on and saying, Philip, come on, this or that or the next thing. But you see me, if, if Celtic drop points tomorrow, you'll be on the show on Monday night and having a right good pop at Brendan Rogers. You're stum man for predictions. You're you putting. Oh, that is rich. That is the, rich. To be yeah, fair, but will, we, ad- will we address on behalf of John and others? Though you did say on Friday night you didn't think Rangers would lose another game this season, and in I, classic I, UK I, yeah, yeah. fashion, it's happened in the very next game. I freely hold my hands up to that one. I will try my best to satisfy John by saying. As I would say, if Celtic were in the same position, for example, when Celtic lost to Hearts at uh, Celtic Park, it is a serious blow to Rangers today because they were rampant after the win against Kilmarnock. Sorry for jumping in, but now you're saying it now, but I haven't heard you saying it yet after the whistles. Well, we had two Rangers fans on discussing things about the match. Now, the guys, now, the guys are entitled to their say. Now... Yeah. Now, you want me to say something about Rangers if you'll please just stop talking and I'll try to oblige you. You mean cheeky, first and foremost. I'm yeah. only putting points across to you. You were the one that said I I said that Brendan Rogers was on a shaky nail and then you said no, I, I hadn't said it, you said it. So Right, okay, fair enough. But so what I'm phoning up for today is I don't hear you saying anything. Well, I keep asking you to keep quiet and then I will. So anyway, it's a very you know, bad result. One. It's a very bad result for Rangers and therefore a very bad result for Philippe Clement. It is an unexpected blip for Rangers and no Rangers supporting man, woman or child would have expected that result today. 100% credit to Motherwell for withstanding the equaliser from the penalty spot and the remaining 35 minutes of the game when they scored and not Rangers. So, 100% credit to Motherwell. It's a bad day for Rangers, a bad day for Philippe Clement. No excuses whatsoever. I'm not buying injuries. Injuries are part and parcel of football, no matter the club. Rangers have lost today because they let their standards drop and could not compete with a brave Motherwell side. Uh, the- Power I have, John, is not much, but it does allow me in this tip for tat to give you the final word, and I won't even let I won't let him back in. You can finish it off. Right. Well, what, all all I wanted to phone up today was was because the fact that I didn't hear what he what you said. Now he should have said at the end of the final whistles, but he didn't. He wait, he waits till he gets challenged on it, and then he says it. And that's my that's my point. We'll all kiss and make up, I'm sure. Thank you to John and Sandy Hills. I'm keeping your mic. I've made a promise to John. You've got loads of time to say more. Don't you worry. 0141951025. Let's keep some more calls coming. Um, inevitably, which is fine, Gordon, because I, I can't be a hypocrite about this when it's Motherwell. I said it last night. It's a supply and demand issue. This will all be about where it went wrong for Rangers and what Celtic can or can't do tomorrow. But... Motherwell really played a part today because as Hugh says when Rangers score relatively early in the second half you're thinking there's only one outcome Yeah I think everybody in the studio thought that as well and I, I would reckon everyone at Ibrox would be thinking Rangers especially with the excitement getting back into the game 1-1 they would go forward and probably pick up the valuable three points but it does get lost a little bit because it is all about Rangers and one or two you know, uh, decisions that Rangers fans feel went against them today, obviously, with the, the lad Casey. But all credit to Stuart Kettlewell, the staff and the players. They went there, they were determined, they knew they could cause problems. You need a little bit of luck, they may have got that today. But it was a well-deserved three points. They will be over the moon tonight with their three points at Irox. 
Yeah, without doubt, terrific for Motherwell. You know, it does get lost. Motherwell, I thought against Celtic last week, for the large majority of it, were good uh, and probably would have deserved a point at the end of it if they got it. Um, midweek, very good again. Good players who are in form and spittle and bare. And they got their rewards today. No easy. I mean, how many teams have we seen Philippe Clement face since he's come in? It swapped most of them aside. No problem at all. A fantastic run that's led them to the top of the league. Ibrox an incredibly difficult place to go. Rangers pretty shrewd in their defending. Don't give much away. Um, and they've went there and scored twice and won the game. So credit to Motherwell. But you know, Rangers fans, I'm, I'm with you. What he did say there, injuries... Yes, they're a hindrance, but shouldn't mm. be an excuse. You should have enough on the pitch to create enough and take your chances because that's what this title race is coming down to. Well, Top think, end of the pitch. I, I think we we will do this, and I think both can be true to an extent, Gordon. If you're mm. talking, I don't even know, right? But I'm, I'm being very rough with this. Ten, ten times the budget, say, right? Mm-hmm. Short care to will say, oh, is that right? I feel really sorry for your injuries when you can bring on Kimar Roof and all that sort of stuff. Rangers should still win the game However If you're comparing Rangers to Rangers And them alone Trying to stay at their optimum level w- Was there bound to be a time When eventually injuries in certain areas Not became an excuse To satisfy Mark mm. But but just inevitably played a part Yeah I don't think the manager will make an excuse To be honest with you But I totally agree I think that key players uh, Have been missing um, look, I, I agree with you I think the Rangers should still have Enough in their locker to win that game this afternoon uh, But they're key men Especially with the, the amount of games That are coming up, Gordon they're, get, they're coming thick and fast You know, they've got the European campaign They've got the Scottish Cup Against Hibs next week And then obviously the, the few games before the split So it's a, it's a bit of a worry for a manager uh, He still has Look, he's still got quality players at his disposal But when you're doing the run-in And you've got that many games And you're in all the competitions You really want everybody fit For the avoidance of doubt Injuries have got nothing to do With what happened today Ange Postacoglu said it often And Philippe Clement says it regularly as well There's no point in talking about people who aren't there You can only talk about the people who were there And those who were there And who came on as subs did not get the job done. Uh, Roddy is in Cardonald. How are you, Roddy? Hello. How's it going? All right. Hello. I'm no. I'm no bad. I was, I was just. Uh, I, I watched the the football results coming in in the telly, and I, I turned the volume down in my telly, and I listened to Radio Clyde. But I mean, I listen to Radio Clyde all the time, and uh, Hugh Keevans keeps saying the Celtic are rubbish. He never ever says anything about Rangers being rubbish. And and when I was listening to you the day in the studio, you could have heard the pin drop. It was just all the pundits are a wee bit. Oh my God, what's happening here? It's as if he's one, you know. Steady, Roddy. I always try and be balanced, but if you had any idea about my emotional state as injury time was ticking away at Ibrox you would have a very different take on that so have a pop at Hugh if you like but don't make lazy accusations uh, about everyone Roddy uh, Hugh I think I'm seeing a bit of a theme here you are you've been too harsh on Celtic see the Celtic fans you're not doing it you see they're building themselves up for a fall because if Celtic don't win tomorrow those people will turn on Brendan Rodgers and they'll turn on Celtic but they'll turn on Brendan in particular so before anyone starts saying, oh, he says this about Celtic, but doesn't say that about Rangers, wait until you get Tynecastle out of the way. When I have criticised Celtic, it has been on days when Celtic have let their standards drop, as Rangers have done today. Now, Rangers under Clement win more points than Celtic do uh, in the time that he has been along with Brendan Rodgers, 21 games for Clement, 20 for Brendan now. He, Clement, has taken more points. Therefore, I have been critical of Celtic when criticism is required. Some Celtic supporters will never, ever criticise the team and they are, therefore, the last to know when anything goes wrong. But K9 Doug is elaborating on Twitter. He says, a draw's a disaster, a defeat's a catastrophe. But Correct. today, you're only calling it a bad result. Well, You're not going I, far I, enough I mean mm, Am I Hugh. to say it, It's my phrase 
That's what I mean. he's, he's holding it against you. Uh, and what K9 Dub wants to know yeah. if it was a disaster. The, the uh, well, on, the, on the basis that I always say a draw is a disaster, defeats a catastrophe, Rangers have had a catastrophe today. There you go. I don't know if that'll satisfy anyone, but we've, he's said it. 0141951025. Uh, thanks to Roddy. Who wasn't that all of you? He said you were raging, you were raging apparently, Mark Wilson. Apparently, all well, of us, because you would have been part of it. Yeah, I know. So I got he said that all the pundits, you could have heard the pin drop. So are we to assume that you, Roddy, Mark Wilson, were tell raging? You, I was not raging <laughs> when that 98th minute full time whistle came, Roddy. I can assure you that. Roddy, do you think Celtic will take advantage tomorrow? Yes, I think it will be 4 1 tomorrow to Celtic. I think Shankland will get, uh, score a penalty. <laughs> it's very specific. It's the most specific um, prediction we've had in a while. But that's it. This is what we said about a proper title race, if you like. That shift in, you know, because it's a great opportunity, as Hugh says, but that, that is all it is. And it puts a different type of pressure. And can Celtic go and bounce back? And that's. That's what it's all about. I, th- I think it, I think at three o'clock today. I think if you're a Rangers fan, you're thinking, right, that's that five points clear. It's over to Celtic tomorrow. If they do lose at Tyne Castle, all of a sudden there's a gap. There's five points. Rangers fans would be over the moon, and it's a great opportunity. Now it shows you how football changes. Great opportunity for Celtic. I do. I'm like Roddy. I don't know if it'll be four one, but I fancy Celtic big time at Tyne Castle tomorrow. Uh, and the incentive to go to, back to top of the league as well. I think it'll be too much for Hearts. But the one thing we're certainly getting now is exciting. Thinking the mood in that Celtic hotel at the minute because they'll be staying over probably somewhere on the outskirts of Edinburgh, probably sitting with their feet up, watching the results come in, and then bang, that result comes in. Nah, you footballers tell us you don't pay attention to anyone else. It's all no. about ourselves. Oh, that old is what they say. Trust me, trust me. Dinner time at whichever hotel they'll be in. It'll be a lively one, I think. They'll be listening, I think. More of your calls and the thoughts of Philippe Clement next. After they play, you have your say. 0141 951 1025. Clyde One Super Scoreboards Open Line. Hugh, Mark and Gordon are about to hear from Philippe Clement and you, of course, will listen in with interest, I'm sure. So get your calls in. Lorraine is a Rangers fan. How did you sum that up today, Lorraine? Do you know it was, it was poor We probably didn't get anything Less than what we deserved Where did it go wrong then? To keep them honest You know like last week When we kind of said about uh, Hearts being our best game of the season And how You know like it's been coming for a wee while to, For us to go and beat a team like that I think today's been coming for a wee while Connor Golson's been poor For so many games And today I think it was shocking Like don't get it wrong They won the great all over the park But I think Golson was Was really poor today Um I don't know though I just feel like I think people need to calm down a wee bit you know like for the, since come on come in you know Rangers have won the League Cup we've got the last six in the, Euro, uh, the Europa League we're, we're now challenging for a title and then you've got the Celtic fans coming on and saying about how you know the, the narrative Hugh's favourite word is that um, you know all the pundits are against Celtic and they're saying about how bad Brendan is but they're not saying about how bad Clermont is the bottom line is there's been a 10 point swing since Clement's came in and that's why there's been negativity towards like Celtic and Brendan Rodgers and now today, probably Rangers will get what they did but a negativity because they were rubbish today and that's, that's the kind of bottom line for me and I just think for that everybody needs to just calm down you know we're still sitting top and I maybe Celtic will go tomorrow and beat Hearts and that's fine because it was always going to come down some games and I'm still pretty confident that, that we'll take it yeah, there, there is every chance of course with it being that close um Again, back to this, is, is it a one-off? Is it a bad day? Is it something... I've not heard Philippe Clement's comments. I'm almost certain he's hardly going to blame his defenders because of how good they've been. But then they did have an off day. I think Conor Goldson will have bear-related nightmares. John Suter wasn't you know, a, a exempt from blame either. Gordon, is it... Uh, are there things that he'll want to tweak or do different or work on it? Or, or does it sometimes just not go your way? Yeah, I, I think that um, the Rangers manager will just take it as it is, Gordon. I don't think he'll get too caught up in it. There's still a lot of football to go. Yes, great opportunity for Celtic tomorrow. Strange, because Lorraine's not the first to come on as a Rangers fan and criticise Golson. I was sticking up for him about two weeks ago. There was a supporter on having a real dig at him. Uh, obviously, we don't see the games live, so Lorraine's probably there watching him week in, week out. Um, he's going through... Uh, 
a little dip in form But if you look at Rangers Performances defensively lately They've been excellent since Clement's come in So I think it's uh, One of these days that yeah, you put it down to a bad day at the office, but also give credit to the opposition and well done to Motherwell. Uh, but I'll be interested to hear what the Rangers manager makes of it. Hmm. Well, any other thoughts on Conor Goldson or anyone else's performance? Uh, Lorraine's still pretty calm about it, all wanting to take the positives, which is understandable as well. Let's hear from Philippe Clement. Thanks, Lorraine. We didn't start the game well, although we, we wanted and we talked about that a lot. And the players wanted also, the warm-up was really good. But uh, the quality with the ball and in the action with the goal, without ball also not. So, yeah, I don't put a finger towards my centre-backs who have been doing really good last weeks, last months. So they make a mistake or there's a mistake made. Clearly, maybe in being too eager to win the duel. I think that was more the case. And then you have the bad luck that uh, it's directly a goal also. Um, so that gives a lot of belief to the opponents. But then we took the game in hand also. Uh, and even more, yeah, the last 20 minutes of the first half and the second half. So we had today 70% of ball possession. We had uh, a lot of chances, but it was a day that, uh, yeah was the opposite, I think, from uh, the day that we had a week ago. Uh, yeah, in the space of a week, you were talking the best league performance of the season. Yeah. This probably wasn't the worst because of some of the depths that were plunged to earlier in the season, but it would have to be one of them. Well, yeah, after the 5 uh, nil against Hearts, we spoke about it as a statement result. Rangers then came back from a goal down at Kilmarnock. Clement described it as a massive result and on the back of that they've come out today and they have flopped there is no other word applicable Lorraine who was on the line there was very very straightforward they, they just did not play well Clement is a man who lives by data and he is looking at 70% possession and does not think that Rangers did enough with it and has found fault with these centre backs therefore it's a bad day and it's made even worse by the two previous games which built up confidence and momentum, none of which was maintained today. Jason is next through. Jason, how are you? Very well, guys. How's you doing? Yeah, all good in here. Um, what did you make of it today then? Is there anything that, that went wrong in particular for you? Yeah, I, I, I won't really echo what Lorraine said, to be honest with you. I'll go to the games, most of the games, and I've noticed over the last couple of weeks that uh, we've, been getting, uh, we've been getting away with games, and I do generally believe that Goldson's legs are starting to go a little bit. So that was my first point. And the second point was, was I was absolutely shocked that Tom Lawrence never started the game today. I, I, know, I understand he likes doing rotation, but when he wasn't on the team sheet, Raskin just doesn't offer much. He just goes left or right or goes back. And I just had a feeling the minute Lawrence wasn't on that team sheet, I just had a feeling the day was going to go be a bad day. Uh, I, I'm racking my brain. I think it was mentioned about Tom Lawrence still getting the minutes managed slightly. I think it was, Mark. It's a frustration that for fans, though. They, they don't However, see that. Yeah. To be careful. But also, players. you know, because we're talking about depth and Rangers in the last few weeks have looked like they do have it. Yeah. But then it does come on if, if Lawrence is getting his minutes managed. Apologies if I've remembered that incorrectly. Is Nicholas Raskin up to it? And then on the basis of today, yeah. he well, wasn't. Look, and he's been off it a bit. Look, we, we praise Philip Clement for changing the side and it working every week. But as soon as it goes wrong, then fans will pick up on it right away. Start your strongest team, start your strongest players. Um, uh, if he's not to speed, if he's injured, well, don't put him in the squad. If Lawrence is fit, he's got to start because he's making an impact. I was surprised today because I didn't hear that from Clement that he was getting managed. But I cannot understand why. It's a player who's come in and out and he's had no luck with run of injuries. But there's no doubt for any fan going along and seeing the way Lawrence impacted things midweek and what he's done in recent weeks, then they would have hoped he would have started today. And to bring him on, was it a half-time he came on? Um, for Raskin, shows that come on mm. obviously needed much more from his side. So fans are right to say, well, why not start him? Take him off at 45 if you get the right drill. It doesn't often work like that, but you can understand. Jason, are you being knee-jerk on Connor Goldson, or do you genuinely think there, there are worries there? 
I think there's worries. I think when it comes to the, I love the fact how close the title challenge race is, and it's good for the Scottish game and good for Scottish football. But I think when it comes to the end of the season. I think this won't be the first time that he gets found out. Like he, he, he got ragdolled all day today. Um, Any time the ball went over, it just seemed like the legs had gone. I, I wouldn't even say that both of the centre halves had the greatest game, but I think it could be a defining reason by the end of the season with the, the, the making back and bite is that we've no invested in a, in a centre half, which worries me. Overall, though, you're not worried. You don't think this is a damaging day in the title race psychologically or anything like that. I think when we initially came out of the game, we're listening to you guys. When I came out of the game, I was genuinely disappointed. And I thought, if you, if you can't turn up and beat Motherwell at home, you don't deserve to win the league. But now that I've sort of calmed down a bit and I've listened to you guys and had a good chat, I suppose it's going, to, it's going to be a little bit of nip and tuck. But you have to take care of it. If you're going to win a league, you need to beat Motherwell, mother, mother, Motherwell at home, in my, in my opinion. Well, Motherwell haven't won a top flight league game against Rangers at Ibrox since 1997. I'm not a massive fan of the stat Because as factually correct as it is They did of course go there and win the playoff Which was quite important in 2015 But Facts are facts You own Coil 1997 I uh, remember the game well I was working at that game uh, It was a day that could have won Rangers the league title uh, And uh, Owen Coil uh, Prevented that from happening I think what's happened today Heightens If that's possible Heightens the importance of the two old firm games That have still to come We'll see what happens at Tynecastle tomorrow That will take care of itself But the progress of the championship just now We are now getting so close to the final line That the two old firm games now become The stage above massive Well it's the first sign in a while That Rangers can drop points to other teams Because they've not obviously not done that in quite a while Um I'm certainly not lost to other teams in it even longer But the goal difference is now level as well For anyone that's keeping note Plus 48 for both Rangers with the two point advantage Let's bring in Kenzie who's also on the line What do you think Kenzie? Are you, are you panicking a bit? Does that worry you today or not? Uh, not really Like As I said to the guy before on this like, Big teams like Real Madrid, Boss or Man City They win losing and draw games and they still win the league, so it's not a big worry at the moment, but if we can't beat our next few games, then that will be this big panic. Yeah, again, that's it. You, and sorry, Gordon, only only time tells if this mm. is damaging or if the pressure gets or if the hangover set, whatever, all these phrases that you hear, um, you can understand why it's a bit early for proper panic albeit no disappointment is the previous caller and I'm not going to be disrespectful to the steel men but when you get yourself in this position mm. and your next task is a home game against the team that was I think it was 8th in the league going into today you kind of hope to take advantage of it 100%, 100% if you look at the last week the last three fixtures you would never have picked Motherwell one that's going to be the shock you look at Hearts at home they were in form Rangers ran all over the top of them you look at Kilmarnock, difficult place to go. Uh, Kilmarnock took the league. See, you talking about the defence. I've watched Rangers down at uh, Rugby Park, and I thought they gave up a couple of chances to Kilmarnock first half from set plays. Balls in the box at Suter and, and Golson didn't deal with at all. And I think. Uh, Is there any theme in the sort of, and I'm being very general, but that kind of Watkins, Vassell, Bear. Yeah, they, is it that, are those powerful ones I the think, ones that are causing some difficulties? Yeah, I think Motherwell today would have played in that. I think they would have said, "Look, get balls in quickly. Let Bear go and try and upset the two centre backs." Um, you know, Casey comes up, gets a header at the back post. Uh, you've got to look at probably Tavernier's defending as well uh, for the winner. So I think uh, if you're the Motherwell manager, you'd have looked at Kamarnock's best chances. And there was a lot of good balls from Kamara played in the box, caused problems. But look, it's Rangers ain't going to lose the league today. Celtic ain't going to win it tomorrow. There's a lot of football to be played. Rangers have got a little bit of breather now with cup football coming up, Benfica, and obviously Hibs next Sunday. Um, so I think it's just one of those that you've got to praise Motherwell and just move on from it. Very quickly, Kenzie, do you think Rangers win the league from here? Well, it just depends, but I think we'll have a good chance of winning the league. Certainly still close. Let's hear from Stuart Kettlewell. 
goes without saying, um, just speaking to some of the TV guys there, and um, you know, first time that Motherwell's won at Ibrox in the league since '97, I believe. Um, I think that just shows you how monumental a performance they put in out there today. Um, we were asked plenty of questions, we were put under the cosh. Um, we had to go into that sort of what I call emergency defending in the uh, in the dying embers. You know, big save from our goalie. You know that you're going to have to go through all that. You're going to have to suffer to try and get something here. Um, of that, there's no question. Um, but I was really, really pleased with how we started the game. We got ourselves ahead. Um, I thought that we um, we showed a real composure to our play. I thought we looked a threat at times. Um, and then even in the second half, when, when last week against Celtic, I felt that we had a wee tendency just to drop off. I felt that we carried a threat still going forward, hit the woodwork in the second half. And probably getting into two, three, maybe even four brilliant scenarios, isolating ourselves 1v1 with the last defender. Um, so I think when you come here, that idea of just sitting inside your penalty box and hoping for the best is never going to be a thing. You need to carry a threat to the other side. And that's what pleases me most. Yeah, well done to Motherwell. They certainly played their part and got... The result in the end, Mark, the ball goes into Celtic's court. What do you think of tomorrow? Well, you know, Hugh's right. It takes on extra significance because now they've got something, uh, not like the pressure wasn't on, but they can go top of the league. So it takes on another form. It's going to be incredibly difficult. You look at away fixtures in this league, where would you least like to go? Ibrox, Tynecastle, probably Rugby Park at the minute. So it's going to bring up its own challenges. Went there earlier on the season. Handled it well, scored good goals. They'll need a performance similar. But if they're missing their captain, that's a big one. Um, so time will tell if he'll make it. Um, but they're in a good place after Wednesday night and they'll fancy their chances, I'm sure. Sum up today's football, Hugh. Rangers have had a significant slip up in the title race. No one expected them to lose at home to Motherwell. No one. And they have done. The advantage has been handed to Celtic. They have to turn the advantage into a reality at Tynecastle. A win takes Celtic back to the top of the table. Aberdeen, by virtue of St Johnston's last gasp goal against Livingston, now sit third bottom of the league table. There is a decision to be made about Neil Warnock. What a day. Big results, late drama. Controversy, everything you'd want from a Saturday in the Scottish Premiership on Clyde One Super Scoreboard, and then some. The beauty of it is, we'll look back on it all Monday night, six o'clock. You will not want to miss it, and the GBX is up next. Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast With Lucas Jaguar Looking to sell your Jaguar? Contact them today for a no-obligation quotation 0141-555-555